sometimes in the holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, sister. Uh, we will now uh, listen to the president of Anadu Mission, who other than the father. Thank you, Brother Cho. Thank you, Katina Opel. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you very much for your presence. So it is my great joy to welcome all of you to the sixth anniversary of Anawi mission. So for me, six is a very important number. So first, congratulations to all of us. So, batiin natin ang bawat isa. Congratulations! So, marami po tayong pinagdaanan no? mula sa pandemic at katipang kahirapan sa buhay, but we are still alive. And I would like to share with you what we have been doing for this in these past years. As we gather today, we take ourselves back to our past. We move steadily towards our future. We started United on a mission to live out immersing listening and encountering processes, building, networking, and organizing church people to help form the Anawim communities, gather and manage resources for the organization, and join in the Anawim struggle for social justice, care of creation, and lasting peace. The following years saw us launch fora and group discussions on current issues uh, affecting the most marginalized among us, the farmers, the workers, the indigenous people, the peaceful folks, the urban poor. We also facilitated immersion activities for church people as they come to understand better the plight of the poor and disadvantaged group. Anawim also provided social services, such as medical and dental mission and preschool education to partner communities. In the process, we are able to mobilize the resources, material, financial, and technical of professionals and students towards the benefit of the most in need among our people. But in order to undertake these activities, we had to do significant organizational work, including the creation of our strategic plan, the setting up of our organizational structure, systems and processes, and evolving an organizational structure that put premium in the love of God and the least for our brothers, both in thought and. And now him has heard of the difficulties of giving birth to something that we all have in vision, a community where there is harmony, unity, solidarity, peace and fullness of life, yet there is still so much to do, and the challenges ahead appear to be formidable, but certainly not insurmountable. We know the rising prices of basic commodities, including that which is our staple food. Rice has created a nightmare from the dream-like promises of the ones complaining head of state, such as the 20 pesos per kilo of rice 
and putting the interest of our jeepney drivers over corporate greed. The rhetoric of election has now given way to the reality of our everyday lives, where the rich keeps getting richer and more powerful, and the poor swept away in the environmentally damaged hinterlands and in squatter areas where demolitions are a common sight. Our political life has never been in more disarray than today, where alliances are as tenuous and fleeting as regular jobs that put food on the table. The quest for them, the, the quest for term extinction of political dynasties and politicians has never been more blatantly expressed in deeds than what we are seeing now, but in the guise of constitutional amendments, supposedly only for economic provisions. The hypocrisy of those who desire fame and fortune is at an all-time high. Morals and principles have long been discarded in favor of cunning and corruption, personal and family interest. Human rights violations are still being committed against activists human rights defenders and development workers. In addition, our national sovereignty is sacrificed in the altar of geopolitical dichotomies, with one party aiming for a unipolar positioning. The countries agreeing to an additional four locations of American military bases, making for a total of nine necessarily makes us vulnerable to attacks from enemies of the United States. And there, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, are the challenges that Anawim confronts, but with our six years of perseverance and determination, we certainly will overcome. The basic sectors that we work with have continuously persevered in their high, in their fight for land rights and food security, workers' rights and empowerment, and for genuine development. We follow their lead and support them in the best way possible. We will harness the resources, time and talent, and positive traits and optimism of the church people for the interest and well-being of the Anawim people. Our vision will prevail and the mission for the poor will endure. So in behalf of the Anawim mission, I heartily welcome all of you and I welcome especially our speakers for today. Um, Honorable Lady Senior, thank you for making yourself available for us today. And also Father Dobo Ripurwan, our very own Carmelite student prior director, who will give the uh, biblical theological reflection. Thank you, and la in po tayong lahat. Okay, salamat na marami for the very inspiring welcome address, Father Rico. Kahit na uh, medyo hindi pa sapat-sapat ang uh, financial support for the Anna Wing. Uh, yung um, welcome remarks ni Father Rico still uh, encourages and uh, give us hope to enjoy more and persevere habang tayo ay naglilingkod while we are serving the poor and the needy, especially the children. Uh, for now, we will listen to the inspirational message from Archbishop Antonio J. Ledesma, an emeritus author. So for now, let's proceed 
para yung time natin ay maging productive. We will uh, call on um, our uh, distinguished guests. Ang former congressman ng Bayan Muna, three-timer three siya na naging congressman. So, we will see how uh, uh, he was uh, efficient and effective in uh, serving uh, the people. Si former congressman uh, Eddie Casino. Cha-cha for whom? Yan. Ah, while waiting for uh, the former congressman, um, we would like to... No signal, no signal. Time sana to welcome the participants of our Zoom. Kaya lang no signal din, so... Wait for energy. Energy muna ang uh, pupunta sa kanila. Um... Hindi natin siya makikita or hindi pa siya naka-online. Anyway, in a few seconds, I think. Uh... Ay, hindi mag- Ah, ito na ba kami? <laughs> Kasi hindi makita, hindi makita sa camera. Um, yes. All right. Uh, I think Congressman Teddy is already ready for his input. Hindi na natin siya in-introduce sa very brief lang kasi mahabang-mahaba ang kanyang resume. <laughs> sa tagal na naging code sa bayan. Salamat, Opel. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. And uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, ilang minutes ho ba tayo? <laughs> Mahirap po yung anytime. Baka umabot tayo hanggang hapon. Mga 30 minutes siguro. Okay na yun, ano? Para lang na... Uh, sige ho, uh, ako po ay hinilingan na magbigay ng ilang inputs ko na dito sa napakainit na issue ng charter change or the amendments to our constitution. And uh, ang tanong na ipinigay sa akin, paano, para kanino ba itong cha-cha? Maybe we should start with uh, a short discussion on ano ba ang papel ng constitution sa buhay natin. No, kasi ang awag dito, it is the highest law of the land. It is the standard by which all other laws are followed. At uh, sabi pa ng iba, ito na yung pinakamalapit na reflection ng tinatawag na social contract between the people and the state. Are you familiar with that theory? May theory kasi na ayan, social contract, ano? So, wala naman talaga ang kontratang physical. It is a theory that states that ang mamamayan, eh, binibigyan nila ng kapangyarihan ng Estado na mamuno, uh, pero ang kapalit nun, dapat ang Estado ay mamumuno na para sa interes ng mamamayan. So, if there is probably uh, a document that can best reflect what this uh, concept of a social contract is, uh, it is the Constitution. Sabi rin ng iba, the Constitution is actually a limit to what the state's power can do over the people. Kasi the people are sovereign sa isang democratic uh, system. Tayo ang sovereign. And the Constitution is there to set limits on what the state can and cannot do. So, in other words, Mahalaga ang constitution kasi ito yung framework no o gumagabay 
sa pagtakbo ng Estado. At sa pangkalahatan, uh, it is a reflection of the society that we live in. No, so, the Constitution does not impose the system that we have. Hindi ho Constitution ang gumagawa niyan. It's the other way around. It is the social system that produces the Constitution. So, ang, magpapas, ang nagpapas na ho talaga, it's not the Constitution that imposes things. The Constitution is merely a reflection of the kind of society that produced that document. So, kung babalikan natin, anong taong ho ba na po itong Constitution? 1987. Siguro, marami sa inyo, hindi pa tao. Um, and this was right after the EXA People Power Revolution. Di ba? And so, that was a period of, ano yun? Buhay na ako nun eh. <laughs> uh, high school ako nun, nasa EDSA ako. So ma masayang period yun. Masayang period. But it was also a period of transition between the dictatorship, uh, the US PAC, Marcos dictatorship, and supposedly the democratic uh, republic ng post-Marcos dictatorship. So, because it was in a transition period, makikita natin dito sa Constitution, I think, elements of both. But, but ang mas matimbang sa Constitution was the effort to veer away from the authoritarian system ng martial law. Uh, kaya kahit pa paano, And sabi ko nga, a constitution is a reflection of what society is. Kahit pa paano, and I think the framers of the constitution tried to put in that document yung mga ipinaglaban ng anti-Marcos dictatorship struggle. Yung aspirations of the EDSA People Power Revolution. Uh, but at the same time, hindi rin makawala ang constitution doon sa reactionary nature of the government itself and also the reactionary forces that were still existing at the time. Kasi yung people power revolution natin medyo kakaiba kasi yung mga gamat na tanggal ang Marcos marami sa mga reactionary institutions ano, yung mga dating nagahari hindi naman talaga nagalaw. Oh, for one thing The bureaucracy was intact. The military defense establishment was intact. The judiciary was intact. At sa ibang lugar, pag nag-revolusyon, lahat yun walis eh. Diba? Pinapatay nga eh. Line them up against the wall. Uh, yung mga ari-arian ng mga mayayaman, binababian ng Estado. Oh, and, and if you're talking about the socialist revolution, ina-abolish pa nga ang private property. Pero dito sa EDSA, walang... Walang ganon. It was basically a shape, shake up of the of the government, but the other institutions were basically in place. No, at ang naging policy ni Cory Aquino noon was reconciliation. Kaya nga sabi, eh, medyo hindi hindi naging ganap yung EDSA revolution kasi it was not as thoroughgoing as people well as, as some wanted it to be. So lahat yan ay nagre-reflect sa Constitution. For example, uh, ang isang katangi-tangi sa ating Constitution, it is the only Constitution in the world that prohibits political dynasties. <laughs> Walang ibang Constitution na nagbabawal sa political dynasties. Pero ano bang political dynasties ngayon? Uh, are they prohibited? No. They are in fact dominant in society. Bakit? Kasi the Constitution prohibits political dynasties pero ipinaubayan niya sa Congress ang paggawa ng batas na magpapatupad nito. And for the last 37 years, 
Congress has never approved an anti-dynasty measure. Ako ho, nine years ako sa Congress. Talagang tinutulak namin yan. Tataka ka, walang mag-o-oppose uh, openly, but hindi gagalaw. Because Congress is dominated by the political dynasties. Nasa Constitution natin ang um, provision for an independent, self-reliant economy effectively controlled by Filipinos. That is in the Declaration of Principles that the state is mandated to establish an economy that is independent, self-reliant, and independently and, and effective controlled by Filipinos. And yet, under the same constitution, the government was allowed to enter into agreements, free trade investment and trade agreements, multilateral investment and trade agreements, allowed foreigners to basically dominate the Philippine economy. So ang ekonomiya natin ngayon, it is not effectively controlled by Filipinos. It is not independent. It is not self-sufficient. In fact, it is totally dependent on imports. Tinga bigas, ini-import na natin. Ti luya, pati bawang, sibuyas, ini-import natin. And our trade deficit has grown by leaps and bounds after the 1987 Constitution was approved. Uh, kaya ngayon, kahap, the other day, nabasa ko sa dyaryo, ang utang natin, I think it's now in the in the 15 trillions. No? At isang dahilan dyan, because chronically, deficit yung ating trade, mas marami ang nag export sa atin kaysa kaya nating i-import. Uh, so, leading sa tuloy-tuloy na utang. And because of this, kung ano-ano ang dahil sa laki ng utang natin, kung ano-ano ang ini-impose na economic policy sa atin, like the privatization for public utilities, the uh, liberalization of our trade and investment. So yun, isang, isang irony rin sa ating constitution. The constitution is very strong on anti-corruption, on the human rights, on social justice. And yet, Kumusta ba ang corruption sa ating bayan? Has it, has it improved? Uh, well, uh, human rights. Yung Bill of Rights natin, napakaganda. Again, compared to other constitutions in the world, it's really ganda yung pagkakalatag ng human rights sa Bill of Rights. And yet, under the same constitution, it allows the likes of a Duterte, uh, certified mass murderer uh, to launch a war on drugs that has killed thousands and an anti-terrorist campaign that has also killed thousands and continues to uh, uh, repress our workers' unions, farmers' associations, pati ko yung mga taong simbahan nire-retag pinapatay. So where is human rights? We cannot even try Duterte. International Criminal Court pa ang nagtatry sa kanya. And yet under our, our constitution, we are supposed, supposed to uphold human rights. Uh, ganun din sa anti-corruption. No, sabi ng framers ng constitution, hindi pwede ang corruption. So they established a system of checks and balances. Meron kang presidente, meron kang senado, meron kang kongreso, meron kang hudikatura, meron kang media. And all these institutions are supposed to check and balance each other para walang corruption. Pero ano nangyari? Well, we have a Marcos back in power. And historically, ito yung pinakorrupt na political dynasty sa ating kasaysayan. Kaya, uh, yun ang isang sad state of the constitution. Ngayon, ang tanong siguro sa atin, okay, the Constitution reflected what it was in 1986, 1987. So meron nga yung gustong mag-amend ng Constitution. So the question is, is it in furtherance of these aspirations for human rights, good governance, social justice, for an independent, self-reliant 
economy effectively controlled by Filipinos. Yun ba ang direction ng Chacha? Or is the direction the other way to reverse the aspirations of EDSA? Para mawalang na yung aspirations for an independent, self-reliant economy. Para mabawasan yung checks and balances. Para ma-minimize yung uh, protection for human rights. Para mas lalong maging open ang Pilipinas sa uh, entry of foreign troops basis facilities. Yun din pala yung isang hallmark ng 1987 Constitution, an independent foreign policy. And in furtherance of an independent foreign policy, ang sabi doon, bawal ang foreign troops, bases, military facilities, unless otherwise uh, under at APA. No, at bawal ang nuclear arms. And nire-reject ang war as a, as a national policy. So are the, the amendments to chat up towards that? Towards strengthening those positive provisions? Or is it towards the other side, controversy. So, yun yung pagpapalaman natin nung tanong na para saan at para kanino ba itong cha-cha. Now, uh, ay nawala. Password. <laughs> Password. Thanks. So, yung cha-cha, napaka-gandang Metaphor po niyan. Cha-cha uh, ba kayo? Cha-cha religious ba? Pwede sumayaw ng cha-cha. <laughs> okay ba? Okay ba? May gusto bang mag- <laughs> What do you notice about the cha-cha dance step? Ah? Huh? No? Atras abante. Pero sila, side yung cha-cha nila eh. Medyo ibang version. Ano? <laughs> so yung cha-cha minsan, atras abante, o left to right. No? But where does it get you? Where does cha-cha get you? No? Nowhere. <laughs> Pag ganun-ganun ka lang, ba? forward pa. Siguro yung magagaling na chat ay yung advanced. May ikot ng dance floor yun. Pero yung mga katulad natin na uh, natuto lang sa panunood o tinuruan lang ng magulang, uh, it's a dance that gets you nowhere. No, you go forward, you go back, and then you find yourself in the same spot. Parang ang dami mo ng movements. Siguro pawis na pawis ka na. Pero wala ka rin nangyari sa buhay mo. Kaya ano talaga eh, no? bagay-bagay yung, yung cha-cha. And I think that very proper so, sa gustong gawin ng mga cha-cha proponents. Uh, sige po, next. Ngayon, ito ay isang serye. No, Kung baga sa Korean novela, uh, nakailang ano na ito eh, episodes, ano nga yung series. No? At, and sa unang gobyerno pa lang, after Cory, of course, kay Cory, that was the time that we had the constitution. Imagine the next government that was elected, the si Ramos ang presidente, who was the instrumental in the EDSA people power. Siya mismo, gusto na niyang baguhin yung constitution. Uh, uh, sige po, next. Yung kay Ramos, yung People's Initiative for Reform Uh, modernization and action. Part 1, kasi ngayon, part 3 na yung pirma. Eh. So, ano ang gustong baguhin ni Ramos noon? Extend term of office? No election? Uh, parliamentary form of government? So, unang gobyerno pa lang, after Cory, pampi pa niya, ito nang baguhin yung constitution. To extend the terms. yung experience natin during the Marcos dictatorship. Nung si Eva Pumalip, meron naman siyang concord. So dahil na-reject yung, uh, na-reject at itinakwil ng mamamayan, yung pirma ni uh, Ramos, nung si Eva naman ang nag-try ng pirma, 
ang sabi naman niya, hindi ko gagalawin yung political, economic lang no? for uh, development. Pero dahil three years, less than three years lang si Erap, he was removed from office. So hindi, nag, hindi nagtuloy-tuloy yung Concord. Nung si GMA ang umupo, uh, she, she was in power for nine years. Dalawang beses niyang tinrat maguhin ang konstitusyon. You had your firma, part 2, uh, actually part 2 and 3 yata yun eh. O firma, part 2, under Gloria, and then you had a con us. Ito naman yung constitute assembly. Uh, kasi there are three ways of amending the constitution. So dalawang times nag-try si Gloria. Uh, at ang agenda niya is the shift to a parliamentary form of government. to a parliamentary federal form of government. Yun yung pinush ni uh, GMA. Nireject din ng tao yun. No? And one of the key moments kung kailan umatras talaga si Gloria was the huge rat uh, against charter change sa Luneta yata yun. Uh, ang nandun si Cardinal Simpa noon at saka si Cory at napakaraming taong simbahan ang kalahok noon. I, I, I'm sure some of Some of you here still remember that kung bahagi kayo. And then after Gloria, si Duterte, no, yung kanyang federalismo. No? At uh, nakalagay dyan sa ating ano, Pepe Dede kasi yun yung kanilang <laughs> natandaan niya yung sayaw ni Moka Uson. Uh, to promote yung federalismo ni Duterte, yung social media influencers niya, ang ginamit nilang kanta yung Pepe Dede song. Natandaan nyo yun? O, bawal kasi yun eh. So, <laughs> uh, just to popularize it. So, yun nga eh. No? Uh, yung, yung aspirations that were reflected in the 1987 Constitution, kung, tit kung titignan natin, mukhang these were not the aspirations that our leaders took seriously. Kasi, gusto mo lang alisin eh. No, yung usapin ng uh, checks and balances in government, yung limits of the powers given to them, yung uh, protection uh, for Filipinos, no, yung restrictions on foreign ownership of lands, etc., etc. Yung mga bagay na yun, that were aspirations of the anti-Marcos dictatorship struggles. Yun precisely ang gustong tanggalin nitong mga sumunod na leaders uh, sa ating chacha serye. So again, it, it is a reminder na yung gusto ng mga elite rulers natin ay not necessarily yun ang gusto ng mamamayan o yung interest na kanilang isinusulong. eh hindi nangangahulog ang interes yun ng taong bayan. In fact, gusto nilang baguhin as reflected in the Constitution. Uh, next. So, tingnan natin, ano ba dito sa chacha serye na ito? Until the present time, you have Irma Part 3 and uh, Con As Part 2. Part 2, Part 3. Uh, ano ba ang mga kung itulak Ano ba ang mga tumatahing mga amendments no, that uh, has been pushed since the time of Ramos through Estrada, through Gloria, through Duterte, and to Marcos? One is the extension of the terms of peace. Ilang taon mo ba ang term of office ngayon ng mga elected officials? Six for the President and the Senate, three for the congressmen, governors, mayors, etc. Yung parang guy, Anne, yes, <laughs> depende sa Congress kung kailan magpapatawag ng election. So, ang, ang isang paulit-ulit na amendment, gusto nilang habaan. Masyado daw maiksi. So, from three years, gusto nila four, yung iba five years. Uh, so, longer term for our government officials. Halawa, Gusto nila, alisin yung term limits. So, pahahabain mo na yung term of office, tatanggalin mo pa yung term limits. Ang term limits sa ngayon is one term for the president, three terms for the senators, 
and then three terms for congressmen, governors, etc. So that's effectively nine years for uh, nine years for congressmen, pa -ba -ba. for president, for senators. That's six times three. Ilan yun? Eighteen years for a senator, and then sa presidente six years lang. Ang gusto nila, tanggalin na yan. Pwede nang siguro 12, 12 years o baka 18 years din o baka forever. Uh, so ayaw na nila na may limit-limit. So hindi pa sila kontento sa 18 years, hindi pa sila kontento sa 9 years. Uh, gusto nila mas mahaba. Next, no election. No? At ito, nilalagay sa transitory provision hanggat sa susunod na election under the new constitution what ano na uh, hold over yung mga politiko and that's that has always been an incentive for politicians to uh, support cha cha uh, next so ito yung mga political yan extenders of office remove term limits no election at gusto nila yan kasi daw kailangan yan para labanan ang abuso sa gobyerno para mabawasan ang corruption ano tingin niyo <laughs> pinahaba ba natin ang terms at inalis natin ang term limits will that result to good governance? Sa Philippine context, parang hindi. Kasi sino ba ang may hawak ng political power sa ating mga probinsya, sa ating mga distrito, now hanggang sa national? No? It is the political dynasties that are supposed to be prohibited under the Constitution, eh sila na nga yung namamayagpag. Tapos, gusto pa nila, anli na. No, mas mahaba na yung term, walang term limits, kontrolado pa nila yung kapangyarihan. Ano na mangyayari? Alam nyo ba, the situation of the political dynasties is getting worse. Dati ang tawag dyan, political dynasty, kasi sunod-sunod, uh, No, yung mayor, papalitan siya ng, ah, yung tatay yung mayor, papalitan ng asawa, papalitan ng anak. No? Ngayon, hindi na lang theme political dynasties, ang uso ngayon, fat political dynasties. So hindi lang magkakasunod-sunod, magkakasabay-sabay pa. So ang tatay ang mayor, ang nanay ang vice mayor, ang first counselor yung anak. So, yung kabit, barangay captain. <laughs> Nasa ano na ngayon? Pati national, gano'n na rin. May mag-ina ngayon sa... Ilan ba magkakamag-anak sa Senado ngayon? May mag-ina, may magkapatid. Ano, oh, ano pa? Eh pag nanalo pa ang tool for next election, eh di may <laughs> magkakapatid pa rin. No? Eh din sa presidente, gano'n na rin. Paulit-ulit na rin. No? So, tapos... Tatanggalin mo pa ng term limits? Pahahabain mo pa yung terms of office? But ano ang... Sino, sino ang kikinabang dyan? Para kanino ba yan? Eh di mas mahihirapan na ma-elect yung mga ordinaryong tao katulad natin. Wala na. Wala na pag-asa. No, ako ho, sa Makati ho ako nakatira. Eh yung <laughs> mayor doon, uh, na anak ng dating mayor, has been in power for the last 37 years. Ang tatakbong susunod na mayor, yung asawa niya, ang kalaban, yung kapatid niya, yung kasalukuyang mayor, baka lumaypat dun sa tagik, kalalabanin naman yung asawa ng dating mayor na senador, na ang kapatid ay senador din, at ang asawa ay congress, ay yung kapatid ay congressman, No? Sa isang distrito, sa kabilang distrito ay asawa niya, mga kayetano. So that is, uh, eh ano na yan ha, this is a city. Medyo mataas ang consciousness ng mga botante. Eh ano pa kaya sa probinsya? Talagang mga warlords, mga you know, political dynasties talaga. So this kind of amendment to the constitution, hindi ko hindi makakatulong, makakasama. Okay, so, so mga uh, was yung shift to unicameral parliamentary system o yun pala. 
No, ang gusto nila doon sa shift to a parliamentary system, basically abolish mo na yung Senado. So it will now be the district representatives who will have all the power. O yung ibang version naman, may Senado pa rin, pero ang Senate hindi na nationally elected, regional na ang elected. So sa, sa version 1 for parliamentary system, you have members of Congress or Parliament representing the districts. Sa version 2, representing districts and regions. Alright. At yung parliament na ito, dito rin manggagaling ang members of the cabinet and the prime minister. So the head of government and his cabinet will also come from the parliament composed of representatives of the districts or regions kung merong bicameral. Tapos dun sa third version, so may parliamentary ka, either unicameral or bicameral, meron ka pang parliamentary federal. So yung sa federal naman, ito fleshed out ito ng proposal ni Duterte, magdadagdag ka ng labing walong gobyerno, regional governments, with their own regional governor, vice governor, may sariling regional legislative body, may sariling police yun, police force. No? Uh, at syempre, yung, it, it's basically magdadagdag ka ng additional layer of government sa level ng region. So may barangay captain ka, may munisipyo ka, may probinsya ka, meron ka pang regional leaders. Alright. Again, kung ginawa ba natin yan, makakatulong ba yun sa paglaban sa graft and corruption? Abuso. What will happen to Congress? Congress will be the most powerful body. Yung check and balance ng Congress, Senate, Executive, wala na yun. Because the executive will come from parliament. O, at yung prime po ng ministro, hindi yung good na good doon sa mga congressmen. In real terms, today, if we have a parliamentary system today, the speaker of the house, yun na yung magiging prime minister mo. So effectively, you have a Martin Romualdez as the prime minister. Tapos paglalagay pa sila ng ibang speaker. At kukunin din nila yung mga membro ng cabinet kung sa kasalukuyang membro ng kongreso. So, mawawala yung check and balances. Mas magiging vulnerable to uh, sabuatan yung executive and, and uh, legislative. And worse, sino ba ang may hawak ng kapangyarihan sa level ng districts at regions? Ito yung political dynasties na naman. O, di ba yung mga congressmen? Puro anak ng dating congressman yan eh. When I was in my first term in Congress, uh, one of the first few days na nasa kongreso ako, nagme-merianda ako dun sa lounge. Meron ko ng lounge doon eh. Kas katabi ko si congressman Roy Lugoles at that time. Si Goles talagang ano na, nakakalimang terms na yata yun sa Congress. Talagang inugat na sa kongreso yon. So, nagkakape kami. Tapos tinitingnan namin yung mga bag pumapasok. Sabi niya sa akin, Ted, ang daming bata ngayon sa Congress, mga batch mo. Sabi niya, talaga ho? Oo, oh, yan, si ano. O, oh, yung pumasok. Anak yan ni ganito, dati kong kasama dito. Ah, okay. Tapos may pumasok, ah, yan. Anak din yan, ni ganyan. No? May pumasok na, ah, ito, asawa ni ganyan, dating kasama. Bakit pumasok? Mga anak, asawa, kamag-anak, nung dati niyong mga kasama din. So, again, uh, sa isang study ng Ateneo, uh, lumabas para ng 88% eh, ng mga governors, politicians, etc. ay members of the political dynasties. I think it's higher now in Congress. Baka man, mga 90% na siguro no? ng mga miyembro ay political dynasties. So, if you give all power to the parliament, that will be composed of the members of the political dynasties because they control political power in the districts and the regions, anong mangyayari sa ating national government? E di, ganun din. So ito ba ay kanino pumapapor? Para kanino ba itong amendment ng parliamentary? Will it be for us? Will it be for them? Kasi ano naman eh, there is no one good model yung 
parliamentary versus presidential, it's a never-end debate. Pareho may good and bad yun. Kailangan natin tingnan, ano ba yung epekto talaga? Who will benefit from this kind of yung pagwawala ng checks and balances? Ito yung mga political dynasties. And again, tingin ko hindi maganda para sa ating bayan. Next, ang paulit-ulit din, yung pag-alis ng limits on foreign ownership and control of public land, uh, public utilities, schools, media, advertising. At ang logic dyan, bukas natin sa mga dayuhan uh, para mag-invest sila dito, dumami ang trabaho, uunlad ang Pilipinas. Again, uh, basic question, bakit ba nag invest ang isang investor sa isang lugar? What is the objective, especially of a multinational corporation in investing into a country? Is it to give away money? Is it to give jobs? No. <laughs> ang basic reason, ba't ka nag invest sa isang bansa ay para kumita. No? Para kumita, ang gusto mo, konti lang yung manggagawa mo, pero marami kang napoproduce. Ang gusto mo, mura yung labor. Ang gusto mo, mura yung raw materials, kung kukuha ka man sa raw materials dyan. So, ang gusto mo, mababa yung tax. Gusto mo, kumita pa ng marami. Because otherwise, edi mag-invest ka na lang dun sa bahay mo, sa lugar mo. Ba't ka papupunta all, of, all the way to the Philippines to invest? It is to make more money than you are making back home. At yun yung nangyayari. Kapag puro foreign investor, puro foreign investors, parang straw yun eh. Oh, soft drinks, lalagay ka ng straw, matutuwa ka, oh, nagkaroon ng straw. Development yun, may straw na yung ating soft drinks. Yun pa, yun bro, ginagamit yung pang sip-sip. And that, uh, that, yan ang papel ng mga multinational corporations which are based in the imperialist countries. It is to siphon, siphon off the resources of the undeveloped countries and the cheap labor of the undeveloped countries to make greater profits for the big corporations. Kaya, kaya again, sino ang makikinabang tunayagan natin magmayari ng lupa ang mga dayuhan sa ating bansa? Yung mga squatter ba? Yung mahihirap? Uh, no. Yung bang ating sariling negosyante? that they will now have to contend with fo- much powerful and richer foreign corporations. Eh, wala na nga halos manufacturing sa ating bansa when we opened up our economy in 1995. Grabe na nga ang ating trade deficit. No? So, it, it will worsen. Tapos, ibubukas mo yung pagmamayari ng mga skwelahan. Uh, what, ano ba ang papel ng skwelahan sa isang lipunan? ituro ang sarili nating kultura. No? So ngayon, eh, papayagan mo na yung foreigners, malamang ang una magtatayo ng skwelahan dito ay ang Chinese. Pagamat marami na sila yung skwelahan, pero, no? kasi yung pag-iisip na, ang, yung social media nga, pinasok nila, ano pa yung educational system natin. Anyway, so yung opening up, and then also removing the limits on foreign exploitation of natural resources. No. Ito naman kahit balikan nyo. No. Uh, you can verify these are the key historically dito sa Chacha. Ito yung palaging tinutulak ng mga nagtutulak ng Chacha. And because of that, dahil kitang-kita na hindi maganda para sa tao, hindi lumutusot. Chacha was defeated during Ramos's time, defeated during Arab time, defeated during Gloria time, defeated during Duterte time. Bye the people. Kasi ayaw. Hanggang the other day lang, dumapas 80% of Filipinos do not like cha-cha. Kasi, kitang-kita mo naman eh. Sino ba matikinabang dyan? Hindi nakakalusot. No? Maaring yung butante natin, nalito noong 2022, pero, pero, from the time of Ramos, 
uh, we have always stood fast na hindi pwede na yung amendment sa Chacha, itatanggalin nyo precisely what makes the Constitution uh, a good document reflective of what happened in 1986. Kagawin nyo pang mas malala. And because of that, because alam ng mga proponents na i-reject ng mamamayan ito, medyo nag-iba na sila ng approach. Now, if you look at what they did, next slide. I thought, uh, just as a background, we have three ways of amending the Constitution. Either uh, Congress, uh, upon vote of three-fourths of all its members, so yan yung pinatawag na con us. There's no such thing as constituent assembly in the Constitution, but essentially it is the first way Congress upon the votes of three-fourths of all its members. Ang question si siyempre dyan, ano ba mag-vote ang Congress? Will they vote separately or jointly? Kasi we have two houses of Congress. So yung three-fourths pa, paano bibilangin yun? No, yan palagi ang issue. Pangalawa, a constitutional convention. Now, to have a constitutional convention, Congress should first vote on a measure calling for a constitutional convention, two-thirds vote dapat. No, or kaya, through a plebiscite, uh, majority vote magsabi na constitutional convention. Medyo mahaba, masalimot, magastos na proseso. And third is through a people's initiative. Pero sa people's initiative, kailangan 12% ng lahat ng registered votes, voters ay mag-agree. And then, uh, uh, 3% per district ng mga botante dapat pumirma. So, medyo madugo din. All right. So, what they did, uh, next slide. Una natin ito nabalitaan late December last year at pumutok ng January, yung PI, People's Initiative. At kung papansin ninyo, kung sa nilatag nating previous attempts, yung agenda ng Chacha, wala na dito. No mention of term limits, no mention of term extension, no mention of lifting of restrictions on foreign ownership. No mention ng parliamentary government. No, ang gusto lang nilang baguhin ay kung paano babaguhin ang constitution. No, ang nakalagay dito, Congress, uh, upon a vote of three-fourths of all its members, yung pag-aamend ng constitution, voting jointly, and upon the call of the Speaker or the President of the Senate. So, gusto lang nilang ayusin ano ba talaga aamendahan ng Congress ang constitution. Yun yung pinapakament nila. At ang gusto nila, tumoto ang Kongreso on amendments to the Constitution, efforts of all members voting jointly. So ano ibig sabihin yan? Nauna pala, gusto nila, ang magpapatawag ng session ay either the Senate President or the Speaker of the House. Ang practice kasi ngayon, pag may joint session, parehong nagpapatawag. The Speaker will call for a joint session for the members of the House. The Senate President will call for a joint session for the Senators. Magsasama sila. Ganun na nangyayari tuwing SONA. Pero dito, pag pagbabago ng Constitution, ang gusto silang gawin, ah hindi, kahit isa lang. Kahit yung Speaker of the House lang magpatawag or ang Senate, Senate President lang magpatawag, pwede na nating i-convene. And then, Nagpatawag yung either of them, nagbotohan, joint yung voting. So what does that mean? How many senators do we have? 24. How many congressmen do we have? Ilan? Hindi nyo alam. 316. Dumami na. So under, under the Constitution, 250 lang yan. Nadagdagan na. So we now have 316 members of Congress, and 24 members of the Senate, ilan ang three-fourths vote? Compute, 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 compute ko na. 255 votes. 255 votes. Ibig sabihin, kahit na hindi bumoto ang Senado, pwedeng ipasa ng Kongreso ang amendment to the Constitution. 255. Uh, that's a magic number. O, tandaan niyo yung 255, babalikan natin yan. So, ang gusto nila pala dito sa PI, uh, balik mo nga, sa PI tayo. Yan. In effect, pagkatuloy yan, si Martin Romualdez, pwede siya magpatawag, oh, let's convene 
Congress as a constituent assembly to propose amendments to the Constitution. Iisnabi ng Senado. Nagating lang yung mga congressmen. Pwede na yun kasi kahit isa lang magpatawag. And then, oh, let's vote na i-lift natin ang term limits. Sino may gusto? Oh, ang bumoto, puro congressmen. 255 congressmen ang bumoto out of 316. Madaling nakuha yun. They can now say, oh, three-fourths na to, ah. Three-fourths na to. So, dadalhin na ngayon sa plebiscite yan. And then it will require majority vote sa isang plebiscite para maging amendment. And when we say majority vote sa plebiscite, kung sino yung bumoto sa, sa araw na yon, yung majority lang nun. No, so kung out of uh, how many million voters, dalawang million lang ang bumoto, o yung kalahati ng plus one, yun lang ang kailangan to approve the amend. So talagang mafa-fast track, mare-railroad ang amendments kung matutuloy yung PI na gusto nila. And that's, that's why ang number one na nag-oppose sa PI ay ang Senado. Uh, at syempre tayo, ang mamamayan. So ngayon napaatras na yan, so far, at least po ang COMELEC nagsabi, ay wala pa kaming rules dyan, pag-aaralan muna natin. So medyo naka-freezer ngayon yung PI. Ngayon, para hindi naman lumabas na kontrapelo sila, ang ginawa ng Senate, next, nag-propose naman. O imbis na PI, ito na lang. RPH number 6. Uh, resolution of both houses proposing amendments to certain economic provisions. So diba yung agenda, pinatago nila eh. No? So, Uh, dun sa PI, so na, na, na oppose natin yun. Ang sabi naman ng Senate, hindi, ano na, economic provision lang. Wala na yung term limits, term limits, don't worry. Wala na yung parliamentary, economic lang kami. Alright. So, precisely, ano yung economic provision? Actually, ito ay pang kontra lang ng Senate. No, ayaw talaga ng Senate ng cha-cha kasi alam nila ayaw ng tao eh. Yung Senate, very conscious sila dyan kasi sa election importante yung uh, malaking boto sa kanila. So what they did, o oh ito, six na lang, dito na lang tayo mag-usap. Pero ang plano nila, i-triple na ito hanggang October this year, by which time mag election na naman, so hindi na matutuloy. Ang problema, may problema doon. Kasi they are pushing for the idea na kailangan ng amendahan yung constitution. And what are their amendments? Next slide. Una, uh, doon sa ownership of public utilities. Uh, gusto nilang i-insert itong word na unless otherwise provided by law. Because under the Constitution, public utilities can only be owned by Filipinos. And noong araw, nagsinabi yung public utilities kasama kuryente, kasama tubig, ilaw, transportasyon, infrastructure, airport, seaports, anything na kinagamit ng public uh, ay public utility. Pero actually, hindi na sa ngayon. Ang naiwan na lang dyan, yung energy, pinaubaya na yan. Ang naiwan na lang dyan is energy uh, power distribution. So yung power generation, pwede nang pasugin ng foreigners yan. Tsaka transmission. Uh, power, ang naiwan na lang is power distribution, public utilities, ay public utility vehicles, katulad ng jeepney, uh, yung uh, Ilan na lang eh. Seaports. Uh, so, iilan na lang ang naiwan. Ang telecommunications ni-liberalize na rin. Iilan na lang yan. Pero gusto nila, payagan na rin. Pero dahil alam nilang ayaw ng publiko dyan, ang amendment na pinasok nila is unless otherwise provided by law. So, para sinasabi nila, hindi, ganun pa rin. Kaya lang, if Congress decides to pass a law, which is against the Constitution, eh mas yun ang pwede. So pwedeng bago, in, in essence, ang gusto nila dito, ibigay na sa Kongreso yung kapangyarihan na amyendahan yung provision na ito through legislation. So it's actually cha-cha through legislation. No, hindi nila, hindi sasabi nila, hindi, hindi naman namin pinabago. We just want the flexibility. We are not saying that we will allow foreigners to own public utilities today. No? Yung Pilipino pa rin yan. Pero, pag naglabas kami ng batas, 
eh, pwede namin baguhin in the future. So they cannot be charged of saying na hindi, pinapayagan niyo yung pag-aari ng dayuhan. Kasabi niya, hindi, unless otherwise provided lang. So, so kinukubli yung matagal na nilang gusto kasi alam nga nilang they will face resistance. Next slide. Ganon din, so this is a public utilities, ganon din sa basic educational institution. Two things. By inserting basic, ibig sabihin yung, yung non-basic, yung tertiary, tsaka vocational, pwede na. Pwede na pumasok yung mga Chinese investors, US investors, kung sino man. Pwede na magmay-ari ng ating eskwelahan. Tapos, ah, uh, pero when it comes to the basic education, reserved pa rin yun, again, unless otherwise provided by law. So the most that you can say is pinapayagan nila yung tertiary and vocational. Pero yung basic, sasabihin nila, hindi, wala pa kaming pinapayagan. Pero in the future, pwede, through legislation. Ganun din next sa advertising. Uh, advertising, eh, although ngayon, basically, advertising is International na yan, eh. wala ka naman gagawa. Pero hindi sila contento dyan. Gusto nila mag, magtayo pa talaga dito yung mga foreign advertising companies sa Pilipinas. Pero sasabihin nila, hindi, hindi pa naman ngayon unless otherwise lang. So in the future. No? So alam mo na itong direction, pero kumbaga, paano ba yan? Alam mong sasaksakin ka pero sabi nila sa ibang araw no ah uh, payaga mo lang akong lagyan ng kutsilyo yung ano kamay ko ganyan so basically this amendment puts the knife at their hands pero hindi ka pa naman sinasaksak in the future pero mas madali ka nang saksakin kasi pinayagan mo na through legislation na lang yung pagsaksak eh No, hindi na kailangan tumaan sa three-fourths vote of Congress, hindi na kailangan tumaan sa plebiscite, matas lang, i-railroad lang ng Congress, pwede nang saksakin ka. So yun yung, that, yun yung may pagka-insidious dito sa RBH, uh, yung economic provisions lang, unless otherwise provided by law lang. Next. Ngayon, ang clincher ito, Naglabas ng RBH6 ang Senate. Sabi ng House, o oh, sige, hindi na kami mag-PPI. Hindi na kami mag- uh, pa, ano yun? Uh, People's Initiative. Sasabayan namin yung RBH nyo because we think that that is the right move. Nagpas sila ngayon ng RBH7. Nauna pa sila because with the, on the last day of session two weeks ago, kinasa na ng, ng Congress yung version nila ng RBH number 6 which is RBH number 7. No, kasi di ba, two houses, may kanya-kanyang version. So sabi ng house, o oh, kita nyo, nauna pa kami. Kayo nag-propose, nauna pa kaming ipinasayan. But actually, it's not an identical measure. Dapat kasi yan, magkapareho eh. Magkapareho sila in almost all aspects except yung resolutory part portion. Napansin niyo yung pagkakaiba. Ang sabi sa Senate Bill, resolve by Senate and the House of Representatives representatives by a vote of three-fourths of all its members, each house voting separately pursuant to the Article 7, etc., etc. Sa so RBA 7 na pinasan ng House, resolved by the Congress on a vote of three-fourths of all its members pursuant to Article Article. So two things, nawala na yung Senate at pangalawa, nawala na yung voting separately. Sabi ng congressman, hindi, yung, 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 yung nasa constitution eh. Because the constitution is silent whether it is separate or joint voting. Tsaka yung congress naman, two bodies, two houses naman yan. So ang ginamit ng term of congress, refer to two houses, at tsaka hindi namin nilagay separate voting kasi kung ano lang yung nasa constitution. But again, what does this allow? Pag ganito ang formulation sa RBH7, nung nagbut, pwedeng sabihin ng Congress ngayon. Kasi nung inapprove ang RBH7, it got 289 votes. Anim lang yata ang nag-close, yung iba absent. So, 
289 votes. So, pwede nang sabihin ni Martin Romualdez ngayon, oh, 289 votes kami. Ang three-fourths is 255. We have more than three-fourths vote of Congress, of all members of Congress, including the Senate. Ah, sige. Kung ayaw niyong ipasa yung RBH6 sa Senate, kasi mukhang nagbabaluntot ang balintot, balintot, nag, nagbabantulot ang Senado, pwede sabihin ni Martin Rawales, o oh, sige, kung ayaw niyo yan, ibibigay na namin ito sa COMELEC, sasabihin namin sa COMELEC, oh, we have fulfilled the constitutional requirement of three-fourths vote. In fact, more than three-fourths vote pa of Congress ang resolution na ito, ipa-plebisit nyo na yan. Hindi pwedeng sabihin ng, ng COMELEC na wala silang pondo for the plebisit because for 2024, Congress inserted 14 billion pesos sa budget ng COMELEC for referendums, plebisits, etc. and other activities. So talagang pwede. What's probably stopping them is baka magalit yung tao. Baka mag-react. No? So, at yan, medyo naramdaman na nila uli dito sa latest survey. 8% of our people do not want cha-cha. Bumaba ang popularity ratings and performance ratings ni Bongbong at ni uh, Martin Romualdez. Tumaas ang popularity rating ni Zubiri and the Senate is against Chacha. Si Sara Duterte may sumaba din pero anyway, ibang issue naman yun. No, so, ana sa ganong state tayo ngayon at Senate and Congress will be resuming session on April 24. So malamang ipipressure ng Congress ang Senato na ipasa na yung RBH 6. Pag hindi kumilos ang Senato, pwedeng ipwersa ng Congress dalhin sa COMELEC ito. But the bottom line is the people will have to make a stand. No? At kailangan dumaban uli ang tao. Dito sa Chacha serye na ito, ang score is uh, part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, 0. No? Huwag na ho natin payagan maging 4-1. No? Uh, dapat maging 5-0. So we hope that... Uh, we foresee that in the next few weeks or months, magiging malaking laban pa ito. Uh, hindi titigil ang mga proponents ng Chacha. Marcos himself has declared that he is fully in support of Chacha. Uh, and and uh, maraming maglalabi dyan. Uh, so, nakahinge din dito yung political fortunes ng mga Marcoses at Romualdez. Ito naman yung dahilan bakit nag-oppose ang mga Duterte. Uh, although sinabi na rin ni Duterte na okay naman sa kanya yung economic chacha kasi ang it's really self-interest eh. Ang gusto kasi ni Duterte yung anak niya manalo sa presidente sa 2028. And that will not happen kapag natuloy naman yung plano ng Marcos for a chacha. So, but we are opposing chacha not because we want Duterte, Sara Duterte to be president in 2028. Uh, we are opposing chacha because it goes against the very spirit and essence nung social contract natin, yung aspirations na pilit na isinama doon sa 1987 Constitution. No Constitution is sacred. It can be changed anytime. But it should be changed for the better and not for the worse. At itong chacha na ito, it will serve the interest of the political dynasties of the ruling elites. It will strengthen uh, the, the social inequalities and social injustices that we have. And that's why tingin namin ito ay dapat lamanan. So, yun lamang po. Um, gandang umaga sa inyo. Thank you, kapatid uh, Teddy. Um, nakakabahala, di ba? Medyo kahit na 4-0, kailangan nating tumilus ng ano? matindi parang sa ganun ay hindi maipanalo ng Congress ang kanilang gusto. So, maliban pa sa maging mapagbantay tayo, kailangan nating maging um, listo 
I have to move fast or mas alerto para nang sa ganun ay uh, malabanan natin itong mga uh, na gustong magkaroon ng heart and pains. Kahit pa, ang ating mga uh, bishops ay mayroon ng mga statements that they do not want ng tatya mas ang makapangyayari o uh, mas powerful ang hindi kayo hindi na nasa ba, nasa mga palpits o nasa mga communities to work harder para nang sa ganun ay talagang ma-zero-zero ma itong uh, gusto ng Congress. Ikaw, brother, kasi nasa mission ka. Pero tatanungin kita kung or cha-cha ka, hindi. Of course. Hindi. <laughs> so, siguro bubuksan na natin yung open forum at uh, invitan uli natin si ex or former congressman Teddy sa open forum. Sige po. Sa mga kapatid na madre at kapatid na seminarista, ano yung gusto ninyong itanong kay uh, kapatid na Teddy? Alam ko marami yan eh. Lalo na dun sa usapin ng political dynasty, kailan ba ito mapuputol o kailan ba ito mawawala, Congressman? Bakit umusbong ang political dynasty dito sa Pilipinas? Nakaka, ano, no? Nakakasuka sa totoo lang. Sorry for the word, ah. Pero nakakasuka talaga yung ganitong klase ng um, legislative na meron tayo. So, ah, yung tanong ko, okay, paano musbong ang political dynasty sa Pilipinas? <laughs> ah, panahon pa ng ano yan, Kastila. Ah, panahon pa ng Kastila. Ah, vestige yan ng ano eh, ng feudal ano natin, uh, feudal society. Ah, dyan naman ang galing yan. Of course, kahit na may may konting modernization sa ating bansa, marami sa mga political institutions natin are still very feudal in nature. Uh, sinasabi nga natin, di ba, ang Pilipinas ay parang semi-feudal uh, country. Kasi nga, may mga ganyan ka, may mga landlords ka who end up building the political dynasties, they control economic and political power, the bottom, at nagagamit pa nila yung sistema ng politika to further entrench and expand uh, their political and economic power. So ano yan? Result talaga yan ng, ano, ng napakatinding inequalities din sa ating bansa. Ano wakasan yan? Well, hindi uh, na nga, sa ibang bansa, revolution talaga yan. Eh. Uh, you really have to overturn the social structures uh, at there was an attempt in 1980 because you remember 1986 was a revolutionary government under Cory Aquino at it, ito yung context ng 1987 constitution no ang bunga yan ng isang revolutionary government and they tried they put a prohibition on political dynasties in the constitution pero pitin kasi nga eh may mga political dynasties din naman sa loob mismo na uh, constitutional convent uh, commission at that time uh, so, ipinabuhay nila sa Congress. At malamang ang nagsabi na, oh, let's leave it to Congress to come up with legislation. Malamang alam din niya na sino pa yun na sa Congress. Uh, kasi yung Congress naman na yan, eh, basically yung uh, batasak ng bansa ni Marcos noon reflected the future Congress that will, that will be elected under the new constitution. Kasi nga hindi naman nawala ng poter talaga ang marami sa mga political dynasties. Uh, so yun. So probably, if, if there will be another upheaval, like EDSA, or some kind of a revolutionary government, that can, that will be, uh, dyan mo siguro matatanggal ang political dynasties. So sa ngayon, uh, we really have to leave it na nandyan siya and, and kailangan mo lang talagang i-challenge uh, every every instance na pwede nating ilabanan, i-check itong mga political dynasties. Okay, thank you. Uh, sige, maganda yung uh, sagot ni Congressman eh. 
uh, may mga venue tayo for dialogues para nang sa ganun mag-change yung kanilang kaisipan. Uh, dito sa banda rito, sino ang may mga katanungan? Siguro naman may mga pumasok sa ating diwan. No? Bakit kaya ganito ang klase ng gobyerno meron tayo? But before that, I would like to uh, recognize all those who are uh, attending online. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pag-attend. Baka kayo po ay merong katanungan, isulat lang po sa chat at meron tayong uh, tech team na nag-aasikaso nito. Then we will read it out loud. Sa mga kapatid na sa minarista, meron bang mga so, mga gusto ninyong ihaliwanag pa? Okay. Uh, come here and say your name and Seminary school, if you are in the seminary school or Paris, if you are already a professed priest. Mm -hmm. I'm just a seminarian. A seminarian. Hello, Paul Congressman. Ladies, what are the important things? I mean, what would be your reaction? Uh, in your attempt to amend the Constitution or to change Uh, the charter requires prayer so that the different uh, processes involving informed citizen. Ay, yun po ba yung nagawa po ba yun? Uh, when we are uh, pursuing the people's initiative yeah, in the context of that, uh, how they call that yung kanilang end goal for. Thank you, yun lang po. Um, ang reports po nakarating sa atin at ito mismo ay uh, lumabas na rin sa media naman eh, pati sa social media, yung People's Initiative na sinimula nila last December did not really have a uh, consultative uh, aspect. Uh, basically, nagpapirmalan sila. Kaya mahalaga dito yung ayuda. Uh, panahon ng Pasko yan eh, nung nagsimula sila magpapirma. At alam naman, pag Pag panahon ng Pasko, sa mga politiko, yan yung panahon ng namimigay ng kung ano-anong Christmas, etc. So, yun yung time na nakakuha sila ng napakaraming mga pirma. At mismo yung mga nagpirma, nagsabi na pumirma sila sa understanding na makakakuha sila ng ayuda. Kung hindi man ayuda, meron talagang cash payments yung iba, ranging from 100 to 500 pesos. Siguro yung ibang congressman o politiko, uh, wala nang time na mag-grocery, pera na lang. <laughs> Pero yung iba, yung iba naman, just promises of ayuda. Uh, meron kami mga nasa Bayan Muna chapters, mga members ito ng Bayan Muna, sabi nila, kasi kung wala kami dyan sa listahan, baka hindi kami masama doon sa ayudang ipapamigay. So just promise. Kasi ang nagpapapirma si Kapitan eh, o kaya tao ni mayor, o kaya tao ni congressman ang nagpapapirma. Eh usually yan, pag sa baba, nagpapirma ang politiko, may ano yun, isasama ka sa listahan, either may ayuda ka, may cash, or kung ano man. So, hindi ka magpapalive out. Uh, yun pala, pirma na yun. So, ang tanong, o bumalik kami dun sa nagsabi na naloko sila. So, tanong namin, uh, pwede mong bawiin niyo yung pirma? Oo, oh, babawiin namin. Oh, meron tayong affidavit dito. Pipirmahan niyo, susumpaan niyo, na nabawi niya yung pirma. Ah, teka lang po. Baka magalit si Kapitan. Baka pag initan kami ni Mayor, eh, ito na yung ayuda. So, even yung bawi pirma na iniisip namin initially na, eh, eh niloko sila eh, di babawiin nila. So magkahalong panloloko at ito. No, na mapag-initon ka ng ano, ng mayor mo, ng congressman. So ganun eh. Kaya dapat hindi na umabot sa plebiscite. Kasi more or less kapag ito ay umabot sa plebiscite, gagamitin din the same machinery that they used to get all those how many millions of signatures 
the same machinery ng panluloko at pananakot ang gagamitin dito sa plebiscite. Uh, plus yung electronic. Uh, kung meron pang focus-focus sa electronic, uh, so hindi na dapat paabutin sa plebiscite ito. Dapat as, as early as uh, sa Congress or sa Senate, matalo na. Kung ipwersa nila na yung kanilang three-fourths vote, ibigay nila ito sa COMELEC, then we will have to go to the Supreme Court. But ang bottom line sa lahat ng yan, whether Senate, Congress, Supreme Court, is really the people's action. No, at yun naman ang lessons natin dito sa Chacha serye. Hanggat hindi kumikilos ang mamamayan, hanggat hindi nakikita ng mga politiko na mga nganib pang kanilang political careers, uh, they will they will go on. No, so, let's prepare for that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, mayroon pong tanong from kay kay Sister Beth Ata to. Ano na ba ang status ng Chacha sa Congress at Senate? It was circulated before it was approved by both chamber. So far, what's the process yet? So ang, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dyan yung resolution of both houses, number 6 in the Senate, number 7 in Congress. Yung number 7, pasado na ho yun. So it has been passed on third and final reading in the House. So ang labanan nasa Senado. Ngayon sa Senado, ang sabi sa atin, there, were, there are at least eight senators who are against it. So it, I think it, it needs only seven or eight votes to defeat. Uh, and then, hindi rin at least sa huling pronouncements nila Senator Agara, nila Senator uh, Spiri, hindi naman sila hot na i-approve yan. Uh, there was a statement by Senator Angara na baka mga October pa nila ma ma sa sa plenaryo. Uh, if that happens, may October, there will be a filing of candidacies. So, ano na yan? Electoral period na yan. I don't think the COMELEC can handle a plebiscite and an election at the same time. Um, pero yun nga, uh, kailangan natin i-ensure that the Senate will defeat this measure. Uh, so at least seven or eight votes. So kung meron ko sa inyo, may kaibigan na senator dyan, ako ka mag-anak, uh, eh, mag-set na ko kayo ng pag-uusap, uh, kausapin niyo ho and, and tell them uh, na ito, as far as we are concerned, ito ang uh, position namin at kung pwede, huwag na niya suportahan yung RBH7. No, there will be pressure because the president himself is supporting this. At uh, midterm election sa 2025, so may mga pangangailangan yung mga politiko, so vulnerable sila. But yun nga, uh, it, it has always been the people's action that has stopped it. So yun ang, yun ang status ngayon sa Congress natin. Uh, nauna na ang Kongreso, nagpapantulot ang Senado, pwedeng i-fast break ng kongreso dali na sa COMELEC yung kanilang 289 votes. But at the end of the day, this will go to the Supreme Court and this will be fought in the streets. Yeah. Si Itito po ng anong secretary, sinabi mo kanina, you said a while ago that the Constitution naman talaga is not perfect. So kung babaguhin yung constitution, ano sana ang maganda na pagbabag? Number two, mula noong 1935 may constitution na tayo at even before that meron ding working uh, contract. Bakit uh, nandiyan pa rin yung problem ng kahirapan? Ang constitution ba talaga ang sagot sa kahirapan? Uh, ano ba talaga ang... ang Pulot dulo kasi nito ay paano mariresolve ang question of poverty. Um, yung pangalawang tanong muna, uh, hindi constitution ang uh, problema, hindi rin siya ang solusyon. Uh, as I said earlier, constitution merely reflects the realities uh, plus may mga aspirational aspects sa constitution pero basically yung limits ng kayang gawin nasa constitution 
Pero ang mas batimbang palagay ko are the actual uh, political and economic institutions uh, na namamayani sa ating bansa. Kasi the Constitution will always be subject to interpretation. Eh. No? Pwede mo namang i-interpret in a number of ways ang isang Constitution or isang provision, but ang susi dyan, sino ba ang may hawak ng kapangyarihan? Uh, who controls power? Who wields power? So if those who will power are evil, they can always twist the constitution. Diba? Sabi nga, the devil can go to scriptures. Eh. Uh, kaya para sa akin, mas yun ang mahalaga. Eh. Uh, rather than changing the constitution, we should change the kind of political leaders that we have. Uh, ngayon, kaugnay nung ano ba ang pwedeng pagbabago sa constitution, uh, offhand, uh, well, for example, political dynasties, the i-declare na niyang prohibited, huwag nang ipaubaya sa Congress at pasa ng isang batas. That's one. Kaya bang gawin yun? <laughs> Siguro, not at present, but if there will be an amendment, that can be probably one of it. Pangalawa, yung pag-flesh out pa doon sa independent, uh, self, uh, self-sustaining economy con- effectively controlled by Filipinos, Uh, baka mas dapat ma-reflect pa to what kind of uh, policy should the government follow. Uh, so dyan na, kasi yung agrarian reform, malino naman. Yung national industrialization should probably be more fleshed out. Uh, uh, so ganun mga bagay. And then yung uh, doon sa checks and balances, uh, mas killing ako sa isang parliamentary form of government eh. But again, given the present context, hindi makakatulong siya. So, yun nga eh. Uh, ang itsura ng constitution will really depend on the context na kinalalagyan mo eh. Otherwise, it is really a pipe dream yung magsabi tayo na gusto natin ganito yung ganitong constitution. Pero labas, labas doon sa dynamics ng lipunan at ng politika, Uh, we can dream we can be as as uh, utopian as we want pero ang kaila at, at the end of the day ano ba ang papayagan ng mga political forces uh, na mailagay at sa nakikita natin ngayon ang direksyon o ang puntirya ng na, na, nagbabago sa constitution is to make the constitution more conservative more reactionary more anti-people, uh, kaya kailangan itong labanan. And there will probably come a time later on na ang magiging tulak sa lipunan ay to make the society more democratic, more egalitarian, more uh, socially responsive. At siguro doon mo na makikita yung ano yung mas nagagandang amendments na pwede mo propose. Until that happens, itong mga proposals to amend the Constitution today are clearly a reactionary in character at uh, an anti-social. Uh, there is another one from a Carmelite sister. Maraming salamat po sa pag-lead di Dinaw tungkol sa Chacha at kung ano ang effect talaga dito sa bansa at sa hinaharap natin. Mas nakikita ko ang kailangan nating maging isa sama-samang pagkilos para sa pagtutun sa cha-cha. And from Sister Beth again, maraming salamat po. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, kung papansinin natin that yung mga ang labas na ng position against Chacha is napakalapag, lalo na sa hanin ng simbahan. You have the Catholic Educators Association of the Philippines, you have uh, some schools came out against Chacha, of course, ang Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, ang NCCP, ang UCCP, uh, ang IFI, uh, kulang na lang Iglesia ni Cristo tsaka Kibuloy. Pero, <laughs> syempre, alam mo natin yung simbahan ba talaga yun. But, um, um, so, ma- ma- malawak ang pagtutul sa cha-cha. Even the private school owners have come out against it. 
Uh, ang kailangan na lang, medyo ipakita natin yung person na yan. No? And I, there are already ongoing talks among various groups uh, on the need to organize a really big action uh, sometime in the future na maipakita natin itong broadness na ito at yung lawak ng pagtutol sa chacha. Because unless that happens, our experience in the past is that unless that happens, Itong mga politiko natin talagang ano eh, uh, they will really force the issue. Uh, so, yun po ang paghandaan natin. And at paghanda dyan, kailangan to keep ourselves informed, to keep our communities informed. Kung pwede po tayo mag-organize pa ng ganitong mga talakayan para mas maintindihan ng ating mga mamamayan at yung mga problema. Uh, maganda naman, marami na rin Parokya ang nag-organize ng kanilang mga forum. Sana madagdagan pa. Also the schools. Uh, we really need a, um, an aggressive information and education campaign. Uh, kasi hawak ng gobyerno ang ano eh, social media at ang mass media. Uh, and we will have to counter that by a grassroots, um, grassroots campaign. Malaki ang magiging papel ng ating churches dyan, ating congregations. Uh, at ang ating mga paaralan. Uh, mayroon pa pong tanong bago ko ibalik kay Professor Tito Saiba. Uh, yes, brother. Uh, this is my follow-up question po, Congressman. Ang mayroon lang po kasi ang um, yung cha-cha at saka yung amendments. Ano po yung distinction? Kasi yung presented to us, cha-cha agenda. Of course, by the agenda itself, talagang mat- However, when we are talking about there's something that we need to uh, uncover about amendments. For example, in the Carmelite Constitutions, we have amendments. Every two years, we amend the Constitution. Not changing or totally, but check and balance. Is it applicable today? Or we need to upgrade? Or we need to update or integrate some other developments and discoveries. Because, as you have said, Constitution is a reflection of a kind of social system. We are uh, it is unbearing and unfolding. However, the Constitution will be defeated unless the sovereign of the sovereign or the people is not yet or are not yet. So, the public will win. So, what I'm trying to say is, I want to know. Ano naman talaga ang distinction niya? Eh. Yung chacha katawagan lang yan. It's charter change is basically uh, constitutional change, basically constitutional amendments. So there is no debate that we can amend the constitution anytime. But the question is, ano bang amendments ang nakasala ngayon? Ano bang amendments ang itinutulak? ng mga nasa kapangyarihan kasi yun yung ano eh yun yung most likely tutuloy first people like us we have our ideas ay siguro mas maganda kung ganito ang mangyayari sa constitution siguro mas maganda kung mas maging matibay ang anti-dynasty provision siguro mas maganda kung na-flesh out pa yung issue of uh, the independent economy pero hindi naman yun yung kanilang tinutulak eh uh, what they're pushing is basically what we discussed as the agenda. And they have been pushing for that since 
nine. Uh, time pa ni Ramos, yan na yung tinutulak. And uh, concretely, we have RBH6 and RBH7 and you have the People's Initiative. Uh, yan lang naman ang pinag-uusapan. No, hindi naman, wala namang proposal to make the Constitution better. It is really to make the Constitution worse. Uh, and, and that is what Chacha has been for the last uh, few decades. ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
Yes. Is US. Oh, meron talaga. Um, kasi kanya-kanyang patron sila eh. Uh, Duterte, of course. Kaya nga hanggang ngayon si Sarah hindi makapalag eh. No? She cannot even come up with any statement on the West Philippine Sea. Uh, most probably, China will be bankrolling her electoral ano sa mga, mga operators ng China na yung tumitira dyan. Whatever. Uh, uh, so yeah, and, and definitely the US will be supporting Marcos. Eh. Pero ang tanong nga sa atin, again, makikinabang ba tayo dyan sa dalawang yan? E eh, nakita-kita naman natin ano ang interest nila. So we really have to uphold our independent uh, independent foreign policy. Uh, we Ang panawagan natin sa West Philippine Sea is to de-escalate, to demilitarize the area. And nangyayari, lalong umiinit kayo eh, kasi sinasakyan ng US, nagre-respond naman ng China. So, uh, in this na nasisettle, eh di lalong lumadla. Because these two great powers are, you know, ginagamit tayong sangkalan eh. Uh, dapat hindi tayo magpagamit. Maging mas wais naman tayo. Oh, meron pa isa, Padre Rico. <laughs> Sige, Lina. Itang umaga po sa lahat. Uh, sa bahagi po ng pambansang minorya, no, yun yung aming sektor, yung mission ano, namin. Uh, ito pong konstitusyon, posibleng wala silang masyadong interes doon kung sino man yung, yung amendments, yung mga ganon. Mas ang nakaka-apekto sa kanila ay yung detalye ng laman ng konstitusyon. Tulad halimbawa, yun pong land ownership. Dahil hagi po ng pambansang minorya, yung pag-aari sa lupa, yung mga lupang ninuno, kapag ito po ay ibinukas na sa mga dayuhan at napahaba pa ang termino ng pag-aari nila dito, lalong nawawalan ng karapatan at lalo silang nawawalan ng lugar panirahan, maging yung kanilang iniingatang kultura. Patuloy silang nawawalan ng karapatan sa kanilang mga lupang ninuno. Kung kaya Ah, uh, sa isa kami doon sa nanawa nananawagan ng pagtutul dito. Hindi man sila nakakapirma, hindi man sila nakakabasa. Ang una naming naisip nung pirma-pirma, nakakatanggap ng 100 pesos. Agad namin naisip hindi sila maaapekt kat hindi naman sila nakakapirma. Pero kapag hindi natin tinutulan itong mga amendments na to, mananatili at magpapatuloy yung pagkawala ng mga lupang ninuno ng mga pambansang minoria at mawawala na sila ng papel sa lipunan natin. At yung kanilang am sa pag-unlad. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat. Okay, there's one more question. Come, come, come. Good morning po. I'm Sherwin from the Mission Partner. Uh, Nakita ko kanina na lumulutang talaga yung desperation no ng dating United na existing administration at saka yung past administration. Pero yung yun yung, yung nag-ignite kung sa ano sila mag-isip at saka mag-plano ng kanilang tumamaraan para mag-stick dun sa position no. Ang isa yung cha-cha. Yung cha-cha. Ang isa yung tinitira pero Parang mayroong ways yung kanilang mga higuaan uh, yung mga benefits sa bawat isa. Pero ito rin, na ito kasi ito rin yung mga kapalapit yung sona dito sa agenda. Talagang opposite dun sa pinupush na amendments ng system administration. Tabas dun sa malapit ng issue sa chan ng masa, no? iba-ibang multi-sectoral ng agenda. So, na para i, ito ba ay para i-challenge yung existing administration, no? Para ito yung paging ganyan. Ito yung dapat yung mayimpose as uh, programs and projects. Pero gigita talaga natin yung desperation ng yung kung talaga na nila i-push para amendahan sa minimum yung economic provision. Pero tama ba na mag-prepare tayo kasi malapit na yung midterm election, no? Tapos ano yung bukod yung sa discussion yung, sa usapin ng anti-chat campaign, 
wala sa ground actually, mas vulnerable talaga yung maralita eh. Kahit dun sa preparation, sabi nga nung mga data nung nakaraan, pre-use yung program na preparation ng mga uh, ng block na gobyerno para i-build up yung kanilang mga tawag dito, mga uh, para dun sa election. Ang uh, pagigita yung Kamala. 2025 election para ito yung BM natalo sir, no? O tinalo, malaking factor yung panre-red tag at saka yung misinformation. Kasi kung talagang desperately push nila yung cha-cha, makikita natin yung isang arena ng laban natin yung sa electoral, although manipis tayo. Ano yung magandang pamamaraan o magbibigay yung mga ideas or suggestion na magagawa ng simbahan but doon sa voters ed. Kasi yung malaking gilang ng population or voting population nasa ground, hindi naman yung institution ng simbahan eh. Pero may role siya para extend yung education sa baba. Ayun po. I, I think yung voters education is a very important component. Uh, Kasi nga, nakita natin noong 2022, talagang kulang na kulang sa voters' education. At magagawa ng simbahan ito without violating its non-partisan uh, ano, stand. Uh, pero bukod sa voters' education, tingin ko yung pakikiisa din ng simbahan sa mga pinaglalaban ng mamamayan. And this, itong sigalot sa pagitan ng mga naghaharing pwersa sa ating bansa ngayon, labanan ng Marcos and Duterte, labanan ng Senado at Kongreso on Chacha, provides openings for the people's struggle. Example, di magkalaban ang Senado at Kongreso on the issue of Chacha. And uh, gustong ipakita ng Senado na may ibang mas importanteng legislation na dapat unahin kumpara sa Chacha. And one of these is the legislation, legislation on increasing workers' wages. So dahil dyan, whether you call it tampitang gilas or what, inasa ng Senate for the first time in history since 1989 nung uh, naging hindi na legislated ang sahot, they passed the bill increasing the minimum wage of workers by 150, ano? 150 pesos wage increase. Pumasa yan sa Senato. Unprecedented. Uh, at isang factor dyan is gustong ipakita ng Senato. Ito unahin natin. Ito unahin ng Kongreso. Hindi yung cha-cha na makikinabang lang yung ilan. Ito makikinabang milyon-milyon mga manggagawa. Nasa ng Senate, yun ang binigay sa House o yan ang aksyonan nyo. Kung para sa ginawa ng House, pinasa nila yung cha-cha, binigay sa Senate, yan ang aksyonan nyo. Diba? So ngayon, Congress will now have to contend with, oh, na mas pumogi ang Senado dito. Ha? Mas tama yung ginawa nila. Eh. Pwede yung udyokan ngayon ng mga labor groups yung mga congressmen. Oh, hindi kayo ng Senado, oh. Kayo, cha-cha inaatupag niya. Ito yung sahot, pinaas niya. Itaas niyo rin. And so, these are the struggles that the church can actually support. Uh, kasi nag nagbibigay nga ng opening. Uh, and there are also other openings with regards dito sa uh, labanan ng Duterte, Marcos, uh, na kinukuha ng ating mga people's organizations uh, and the church can be supportive of that. And even the church can also, baka may mga tactical gains din na pwede nga libawa itong paglaban sa red tagging. Biktima ang simbahan dyan eh. Sino ba ang number one red tagger? Labas sa gobyerno, edi yung simbahan ni Kibuloy. 
o yung, yung network niya. So, in a way, nakikinabang ang, ang uh, uh, mamamayan dito sa awayan na ito kasi na-expose ng gusto yung, yung isang peking, institu- uh, pe- peking religion, yung kulto uh, ni Kimoloy as a political machinery ng mga Duterte and uh, red tagging machinery ng uh, mga reactionary political forces. And, and that is good for democracy na mawala yung ganyang klaseng mga uh, um, mga pwersa sa ating uh, national discourse. Yan po. Okay, maraming maraming salamat sa mayamang talakayan. Bigyan natin ng uh, organized na palakpak si Congressman Teto. Limang palakpak, dalawang kajak. Five, six, seven, eight. Ako may pasobra. Ibig sabihin niya, mas lalaki pa ang ating mga gawain, lalaki pa ang ating mga uh, efforts na i-exert, especially those working uh, in the communities. Um, binagawa natin ito dahil hindi ito para mas para sa mga susunod pang generasyon. So, sa pagkatawag ito, patawagin ko po si Father Rico to hand over ang uh, certificate of appreciation para sa ating mahusay, magaling, mag-explain na resource speaker. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Anong yung mission sa mga may hirap Uh, presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Teodoro Casino for his inspiring talk on Chacha for Home on the sixth founding anniversary of Anawin Mission ng Mga Mayahirap given this fifth day of April 2024 signed by Reverend Father Rico Putonse Ocam. Ikaw lang, Provincial Superior. <laughs> Salamat! So, this time, para naman hindi tayo ano, lubi-lubi. Pag uh, five minute break or 10-minute break tayo, five minutes na lang kasi kulang na tayo sa oras. Tapos, ihanda natin, we'll prepare our hearts and mind. to listen to the biblical theological reflection na that would come after ten, uh, five minutes. Okay lang ba? Okay. So, merong merienda doon. Nauna na si Brother Joe. So, kindly help yourself para sa ating five-minute merienda. Sa mga nasa online, pasensya na po, hindi namin pwede iabot sa mga mga merienda. Pero please stay tuned kasi interesting ang ating biblical theological reflection. Okay na.
Eh, ako gusto Sige lang, take your time. Anyway, in case you refer to my thing, you make such a little over Hmm. Ah, ah. Yeah, yung, oh, oh, yung, ano ha? Bigyan ako ng brief, brief background ng speaker na natin. Kaya. Pastor Jan. Ah, ah, sige. Okay. All right, I think time is up for the merienda and buzzing session. It's high time for us to prepare our hearts and mind. All right. Kung sino po may gusto um, magkaroon ng kopya, pwede. Uh, magkaroon ng kopya ng input ni Congressman Teddy. Available po, kunin lang po natin kay uh, Miss Ketang. Yan. Um, so now, sige po, mauto na tayo. Buzzing session is over. Yan, ihanda po natin ang ating mga sarili, ang ating isip at diwa para sa ating susunod na activity. Uh, so once again, uh, good morning to all of you and to our uh, viewers online. And uh, we continue with our discussion, our forum, and uh, or uh, while you are taking your merienda. The next uh, part of the program is to continue our reflection. We have done the political, social, realities, reflection, specifically on the proposed changes on the Constitution. Now we would like to listen to a biblical, spiritual reflection. It is our way, uh, sorry, I cannot open my I had to look at my telegram. As I was saying, we have now to get into a biblical spiritual reflection, asking the question, what can our faith say, or what does our faith say about what is happening in our society today, specifically in connection with the political and social realities we are facing. So, thank you, Ate Open. So, to help us do that is the Director of Student Friars of the Philippine Carmelite Province of St. Titus Bransman. 
Father Esmeraldo de Coriel. Paga po sa lahat. Magandang umaga, Congressman. Salamat po sa iyong ipabahagi kanina. Very enlightening, informative, tsaka klaro na para present At ngayon pa lang, gusto kong magpasalamat sa Anna Wynn for uh, inviting me, uh, not as a resource speaker, but I think I'm here to facilitate the reflection. So magbibigay lang ako ng mga points para sa ating reflection. Looking at my uh, time here, it's 11.07. Sa ating program, meron tayong open forum mamaya. Siguro baka uh, makain natin yung time sa open forum. Pero wag na bahala kasi within the presentation or within the reflection, meron na rin po tayong mga uh, time for sharing. So may mga, may mga panahon doon na may short silence for reflection, tapos uh, sharing from the group. No? So, kahanggang alas 12 po tayo. Ang springboard po ng ating reflection ay ang tema mismo ng ating uh, anniversary. No? Ang pang-anim na taon na anagversaryo ng Anawin Mission. So, the theme is our prophetic role continuing journey with the Anawim. Siyempre, ang context ng ating uh, reflection ay uh, doon sa ating narinig kanina, yun yung isa sa mga context, pero nandun pa rin lagi yung mga context na lagi nating pinag-uusapan, uh, poverty, injustice, human rights violations, lahat dala-dala po yun natin sa ating reflection ngayon. Next slide, please. So, gusto ko mag-umpisa sa isang matulang pagbati sa ating lahat. Kung makita mo yung back, background pula. Ano po, at saka sa ating mga slides, lahat na pula. So, mapula to me to remain true to the spirit of Anawin Mission. Mapula to express our resolve to serve the people no matter what. Kahit akong hirap, tuloy-tuloy pa rin siguro. Mapula because ngayon, umaga na to, I am going to red tag you. <laughs> I-red tag ko kayong, tayo, kayong lahat in a positive sense. Ano po? Uh, red tag in the sense of being passionate in what you are doing. So, tamaya, paglabas nyo, ingat kayo, pula kayo. O oh, yun, may pula ulit sa next slide. Yung objectives natin, to understand in simple and practical terms why Anna Wynn Mission was founded and why it is still existing. So, six years na po ang Anna Wynn Mission. Number two objective is to seek inspiration from the scriptures and in how we experience God in our daily struggles in our daily life. Ang pangatlong objective ay to keep our hopes alive as we strive to respond to the call from God. Yun pong ating objectives. No? Tatlo. Ang method lang ng ating reflection ngayon ay kwentuhan. I will be telling you some stories. Tapos pangalawa, maybe you will be asked to respond. Ito na yung sabi ko. Anyway, Kahit walang open forum, mayroon kayong time to share mamaya. So you shall respond by supplying the story that I will be giving you with maybe an image or a symbol or whatever you want to share. And then we end by a prayer. So yun yung magiging method natin sa ating reflection ngayon. Um, this will be our opening prayer. This is very familiar to those who are praying the uh, liturgy of the hours, no, yung uh, Christian prayer, yung breviary, because this is Psalm 149. Ano po yung Psalm 149? Ito po yung nasa 
saan natin ito uh, binadasal, mga brothers, mga sisters? Yung mga piyesta, di po ba? So, 5-5-6, morning prayer. Nandiyan yan, isa sa mga salmo yan. So, dito tayo mag-uumpisa. This will be our prayer, but this will also be our springboard for our reflection. And let me read to you the prayer. Sing a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of His faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their King. Let them praise His name with dancing and make music to Him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in His people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let His faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Yung iba couch ang ginamit dyan sa ibang versions. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on all the peoples to bind their kings with fetters yung iba with fetters of iron Their nobles with shackles of iron. We, uh, nandiyan sa pangalawang ano. To carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. And then we end this prayer with praising the Lord. So, the prayer that we had starts with singing of a new song. Gathering of the just in a renewed world. And it is also a thanksgiving from a heart filled with exultation. And so, if we ask ourselves, sino yung anawin? Anong klaseng tao yung mga anawin? So, maybe from other reflections that you attended, or mismo sa orientation ng anawin mission, alam na natin kung ano yung anawin. Pero uh, let me refresh you with what you know about the anawin. So the Anuim are the poor of Yahweh, the remnants of Israel, those who remain faithful to God. If we remember, they were sent, they were sent to exile. Tapos, kung iba, wala na. Nag, nagkalasa na yung iba. Pero may mga mahihirap who remain faithful. Bakit sila nananatiling tutat? Dahil nga wala naman sila ibang makakapitan. No, except God na nagpromise sa kanila na dadalhin sila at mananatili sila buon sa lupang pangako. And these are the poor people who have nothing and who have only God to rely on. So, kaya nagiging uh, faithful sila. Sa number three natin, dyan kung kita niyo, meron aside from Anawin, there is a category That is what we call the Hasidim. Ano po yung mga Hasidim? The warlike symbolism of what we read earlier in the Psalm 149 comes an image of the dedication of the believer who sings the praises of God in the morning. Diba nag-umpisa ng praising yung kanina? But then after that, they go into the ways of the world in the midst of evil and injustices. Unfortunately, powerful forces are arrayed against the kingdom of God. The psalmist in the Psalm 149 speaks of peoples, nations, leaders, and nobles, yet confident because they know or he knows that he has at his side the Lord the master of history, all the Hasidim participates in the battle. Yung mga Hasidim daw, ito yung mga kalaban. So, ito yung tumututo, ito ano man yung mga uh, laban sa tao. Sila ang sumisigaw na hindi tama yan. Yung sinusulong yung chacha ay para lang sa pansariling pakanan. So, ito yung mga palaban up to the point na sila talaga yung nakikipaglaban literally. Ano po? 
On the other hand, merong tinatawag na anawin. But this doesn't mean na yung anawin na to ay hindi palaban. Apo. So yung anawin naman are the poor and the lowly ones. Nasa verse 4 po yan nung Psalm 149. It indicates not just the oppressed, uh, the miserable, persecuted for justice, but also those who with fidelity to the moral teaching with, uh, with their alliance of God. Remember, they had a covenant with God and they had all the codes. Meron silang mga alituntunan, sinusunod yung mga Israelita. Yun yung mga, mga moral laws, anong gagawin. So all those uh, who remain faithful to the, to, to the code, to the law, pwede rin silang makategorize as the anawin. Uh, but they are marginalized by those who prefer to use violence, riches, and power. Sounds familiar and even familiar to us now, di ba? So the category now becomes not just a social category, but also a spiritual choice. So if we ask, who are the Anawin? Sim simply, makategorize natin yung mahihirap, yung nanatiling tapat, pero there is also a spiritual choice na Anawin. And that's why we have the Anawin mission. And maybe you as members of the Anawin mission can call yourself Anawin missionaries by choice. Kasi iba naman sa inyo siguro dito, mayayaman, meron ba? Or privilege? Parang wala. O di, pareho tayo doon sa kategory na yun na oppressed, mahirap. At the same time, we commit ourselves to uh, to this uh, a cause for justice, peace, uh, with our advocacy for the poor. No? And then, number four na note natin ay, those who start their prayer with hardships, difficulties, some inadequacies, displacement, securities, but will end up singing and dancing. And that's why, yung ato yung last kalina, praise the Lord, yung Psalm 149. Kung daw yun ang mga anawin. So ang mga anawin, hindi parang nagsiself-pity. Meron nga tayong kahirapan, Meron nga tayong hinaharap ng mga malalaking mga problema. Pero at the end, we will praise the Lord for we will be victorious because God will be at our side. Nasa atin ang Panginoon. Mamaya kakantahin niya ang mga student friars yan. So masa akin ang Panginoon. Ano po? So yun yung kaintindi ko sa Anawin. So, sana po, nakaka nakakatulong yan sa ating uh, further reflection. Now, one also big category sa ating uh, tema ay yung prophets. And this might be also a review for all of us uh, sa mga klase o sa mga narinig natin about uh, the prophets. Ang number one, nasan yung number one dyan? So, uh, on the question, who are the prophets? Simply, prophet is one who speaks God's truth to others. No? Sa atin, bilang mga binyagan, sabi nga natin, we share in the mission of Christ, being priest, prophet, and king. And being a prophet, we are called to announce and denounce. Announce the good news. Ano yung good news na i-announce natin? Yung lahat ng magagandang bagay. Good news of love, justice, peace. Lahat ng good news. Pero we are also called as Christians to denounce. Ano yung i-denounce natin? Sim simply the opposite of good news. <laughs> Injustices. Lahat na yun na ating tinututulan sa ngayon. He denounce natin, and that is our responsibility. And that is speaking God's truth to others. The number two answer to that question is, he is, should be one coming from, or this word prophet is coming from the Greek word prophetess, which can mean one who speaks forth or an advocate. So, pwede natin tingnan yan in the context of your 
nation. Ano po? Number three, in the Bible, the prophet had both a teaching and revelatory role, declaring God's truth on contemporary issues while also revealing details about the future. Kasi kadalasan pagkaintindi natin ng propeta, nakaka nakaka nagsabi siya kung anong mangyayari sa hinaharap. Pero that is not the main thing. Ang propeta is a teacher and he is the mouthpiece of or she is the mouthpiece of God. Hindi lang he. Kasi may magagalit. <laughs> so, uh, makita natin may mga prophets din during that, uh, the Old Testament na mga babae. Pero medyo konti lang. Um, so, detail, Isaiah's ministry, for example, touched on both the present and the future. He preached boldly against the corruption of his day. Si Isaiah as a prophet, ano po? That's in Isaiah 1, verse 4. And he delivered grand visions, visionary man si Isaiah, of the future of Israel. So, nasa Isaiah, isa yan, makikita natin sa Isaiah 25, verse 8. Next book. Sunod na sagot doon sa tanong, who are the prophets? Number four. Prophets had the task of faithfully speaking God's word to the people, calling the Israelites to go back to the covenant. Remember the covenant uh, between God and uh, Abraham and the rest of the Israelites. I will be your, be, I will be your God. You shall be, be my people. For as long as you obey me, I will remain faithful to you. Yan ang covenant. Pero alam naman natin kung sino, sinong naging unfaithful doon sa covenant na yun, di ba? Sinong side ang naging unfaithful? God has always been faithful and will remain faithful as we believe. Kaya tayo, ang mga propeta, lumabas para pagsabihan ng mga tao, balik nga tayo doon sa ating covenant. Hindi na natin sinusunod ang, ang Diyos. Mayroon na tayong mga Diyos, Diyosan, sumasamba, sumasayaw, kumakanta ka na sa paligid at sa palibot ng mga gintong aka. Diba? So yung kayamanan, sinasamba nyo na, power, prestige, hindi na po yung tunay na Diyos na nagdala sa inyo sa lupang tangako. So the, the prophets were there to call the Israelites to go back to the covenant. Number five po, prophets were instrumental in guiding the nation of Israel. There were more than 133 prophets in the Bible. More than because there were also numerous others who prophesied, such as the 70 elders of Israel. Ano po? Uh, may 70 na, hindi na count yan sa, sa 133. And 100 prophets rescued by Ubadiah. Pero what is very significant for me, they are the 16 women na prophets or prophetess sa Old Testament. So we have to take note of that. Dupetang hindi lang yan, balaki. Number six, who are the prophets? The first named prophet in the Bible is Abraham himself. In Genesis 20 verse 7, God spoke to Abimelech in a dream saying, Now then, return Abraham's wife. Anong ginawa ni Abimelech? Kaya sa, sa asawa ni, ni uh, sa asawa ni Abraham, inagaw niya. Kaya sinabi ng, sinabi ng Diyos, Return Abraham's wife for he is a prophet so that he will pray for you and you will Live. I think live na mali yan na ano. L-I-V-E po yan. Parang inaantok na ang gumawa niya. <laughs> Ako yun. God had revealed to Abraham on many occasions. Ano po? Next po. And finally, uh, prophets always met opposition. Meron talaga. No? We have to take note of that as Anawin mission members. 
prophets always met opposition and would encounter hardships and difficulties, but prophets were also assured of the never-ending blessings from God. Remember all the stories of the prophets. Meron talaga silang pukulang, meron silang pag-aalinglangan. Just remember Jeremiah. Lord, bakit ako? Bata pa ako, sabi ni Jeremiah. Ano sabi ni Jeremiah, ni ang Diyos kay Jeremiah? Don't worry. I will put words into your mouth. No? Kaya yung mga bata dito, yung ating mga mga foremans, mga sisters, don't say na, ah, hindi pa ako maglilingkod sa mahihirap at sa ano kasi bata pa naman ako. Tsaka nag, nag, nasa formation pa ako. God will put words into our mouth and will always inspire us. Now, siguro, going back to the question, who are the Anawim? as uh, paglalagom natin. Sa palagay ko, part sa ating reflection ngayon, we are the Anawim. With those two categories that I mentioned to you. Anawim, tunay man kayong mahirap o talagang mahirap by choice, no? pero we are still the Anawim. By choice and in fact. And the number two, The Anawim are the many Filipinos affected by so much politicking and selfish interest. So, I think hindi naman kayo uh, mag-upo sa sinasabi ko na yan. Kasi totoo, kanina pa lang narinig na natin ano bang uh, pinupursyo ng mga politiko, bakit baguhin ang constitutions na sa pansarili nilang tapakanan. Ano po? At ang nagiging mga biktima, nagiging kawawa, ay ang talagang mahihirap. No? Okay. Uh, and then who are the prophets? Simply, I would say, we are prophets. Tayo po. Hindi lang yung members ng Anawin. Hindi lang members ng Rokarm. Hindi lang members ng anong congregation yung sister? Scalabrinians. No? So, hindi lang. Ang lahat, in fact, we are prophets. Now, next. So, yung isang malaking uh, element din doon sa tema ay yung journey. And we have been talking about the journey, especially for the Catholics, uh, since may, maybe mga five years ago, parang masinsinang usapan about synodality. No? Sa mga Protestants, mayroon din bang process para sa singularity, discussions and all? Wala na masyado, no? Pero yung sa atin, sa, sa Catholics, yung because of what Pope Francis was asking us to do, mayroon talaga ang process about uh, uh, understanding, no? assessing, evaluating, kung paano ang simbahan nakikulakbay na nakikilakbay sa mga tao o sa lahat ng tao. So, as I can remember, yung process na yon ay marami ding mga hindi kaaya-aya na naririnig ang simbahan. Uh, may mga uh, criticisms din na rinig ang simbahan from the lay and from the poor people and from the basic sectors. And that was a good process for us. So, we are both Anawim and prophets in a common journey. And that journey will lead us to where we want to be, which is an experience of bliss, somehow, peacefulness. Mga ating mga gustong nilanais na medyo malayo-layo pa. Pero kahit ngayon pa lang, pwede na nating danasin din sa ating mga sariling pamilya at, at communities. Next, please. So, let us try to focus our reflection on our journey and about journey using the post-resurrection story of the two men walking towards or maybe back to Emmaus. So, naririnig natin ito ngayon after sa uh, uh, Easter Sunday. Merong mga pagbasa tungkol doon sa dalawa na upauwi ng Emmaus dahil namatay na nga ang kanilang teacher si Jesus, nalungkot sila, natakot sila. But while they were walking, Jesus walked with them. 
So habang sila ay naglalakbay, biglang sumabay at nagtanong, anong pinag-uusapan ninyo? And they answered, ikaw nga lang yata ang hindi nakakaalam sa nangyari doon sa aming teacher na si Jesus. Diba? Hindi nila nakilala. And then Jesus started talking to them about the scripture. Hindi pa rin nila nakilala. Until such time na ang kanilang journey, kanilang paglalakbay ay umabot sa pagbiyak-biyak, aghati ng tinapay. And then they recognize that there was Jesus walking with them along the way. And that's why yung image ng journey is very important for us Christians. Na yung journey na yun ay hindi tayo, hindi tayo mag-aalala kung ano mangyayari sa atin because God is always there with us. Jesus is always there for us and with us. Talking to us about scriptures, inspiring us, uh, asking questions from us, and syempre, pagbiyak-biyak, pag paghati-hati ng tinapay. Sharing His life to us and asking us to share our life to each other. Next. Malapit ito tayo. Now, sabi ko nga kanina sa ating method, may kwento tayo syempre. No? Gusto kong ay bahagi sa inyo yung isang kwento. Yung kwento ni Canestor. And I'm begging for you Uh, patience, five pages po siya, pero it's a very interesting story. Just listen to it and uh, maybe from this story, we can get more inspirations, realizations, and uh, mga resolutions sa ating buhay, sarili, at sa buhay ng Anawi Mission. May I ask uh, Brother Nelson to read for us the story. Kingan po natin. The story is 62 years old, but lived among nine children. He was married with six children. He got involved in the movement through his experiences as a are from Madangas. They are both farmers. Father was born in 1901. He was 11 years old when he was playing in Iraqto. He's also from Madangas that was based in uh, Tartaria, Tabito. Parents raised us through farming. We had about 300 hectares of land with different varieties of plants. We had several farm animals too. They did not pay any tax. So by God's mercy, all of us nine children were raised well. Since childhood, I have come to know that my parents were close to God. Their closeness to God meant, uh, meant in practice that they would never look down at anyone. Spontaneously, they considered others as equals, regardless of whether they had less in money, skills, or status. They would never maltreat other people. May mababang loob sila at dito kinakitaan ng pagmamalgrato sa kapwa. They are humble and I haven't seen them treat other people unjustly. We all have a good interpersonal relationship with other people. Even if we uh, did have some bickering among our siblings, they did not develop into serious violence. That was how we all started with other people. Um, fear of the Lord is something that since our child, it had become practice within the family. This true brother, sister, and this fear of God in doing that violates human conduct. We pray God, hence, we never allow little Lucy to abide in us. Because my parents were poor, I had to support myself to finish high school in Parisa in Batangas. While studying, I also was a janitor. That was the time I felt close to the church. 
church was the place of regular living. It was a third place of recognition of kinds of sort of students. After high school, I moved out to the farm until I was able to manage my GC. I became a policeman in Bessemer and the Rest Municipality from 1960 up to 1975. I left service because I could not stand the system. The system followed an entire movement with the AUL was changed. That's some idiot picture of the things that I could not stand it. I would not want them in the practice of abusing others. I went back to my family in Calvaria. That was how I raised my own six children. I inherited from my parents a first of land. I grew in different plants, which were suitable. Saka at the Ryan and Tomin Hall Post. I invest in Just as I have tried myself in this time. To just the Kirisan because I couldn't part with my land. The Aganagos, who were owners of the land, wanted to pay us based on our stay, including those towns and ancestors and not pay the land. Since there was massive land buying by our neighbors, we organized ourselves to unify our sentiments and love for our land. We told the Aganago, we go to first. We would not part with our land holdings. However, we also told them to take whatever they could give us. The commission helped us organize ourselves such that we were shown. And through educational sessions, we were able to appreciate the Mupa Aluhai land is life. And that the brighter future awaited us if land was enriched. We organized several symposia to reach out to other farmers in other places in deepening our understanding. I will go to the Kinesan deeper to serious things, experiences, and to the community. But I put Chinese men who put work as a land is life, and uh, land is life that is where self is born. That is why we have defended our land from then up until now. There is a big connection between you and I started sound okay. Perhaps not in feeling, but I can feel it with him. Mukai Sasarini, uh, it's please for from within. Another value that I learned from the Kinsan is kapatiran or fellowship. This happens when you share what is yours with others as well, by sharing the fields that need to be cultivated. People may need and inspire for a lot of money. Stop making my life happy. When I woke up in the morning, Partners will surpass conditions. For one, it is quite hard to resist the thought of simply eating food. Further, many things blow, even if you do not plant them yourself. But there is a lesson we have been taught. You eat must come from your own sweat. Another great temptation was money. We have been offered money to buy us out and leave our land. But we cannot exchange life with money. Of course, we know that money is essential for any society, but money is not life. It is simply alamati ng buhay or an ornament to life. But this one is lupa, lupa, at lupa. Lupa ring. Land, land, and state. Happiness that I enjoy now comes from the king's son. Consciousness that I have and my better relations with other people. Being the king's son is too nine of or having a life. One does not look for more.
needs to be changed. I hope there is no need for violence in resolving problems. Pero ano yung magagawa kung ito ang hinihin ng mga tarun? Huwag bang impose? That is, ask it an interesting search and analysis situation. When the temple was made into a market, the Lord spoke by the devil himself and came to give him laws to some people there. He may not have used arms at the moment, but there was a vacation when he marched in on these pieces. The meaning of that gesture was that to him, when he received black people from the sectors in power. Not be united so far, so that the problem is given an appointed solution. Various theories then create contradictions. However, these theories must pass through a salaan or C. The salaan of the heart. We have to pass through it to see the face of God. This is the change I want. Unless they pass through this salaan, we will never achieve change. That is why no change is happening. We need a salaan of the heart, no brotherhood, no competition, no rivalry. Theory is created by competition. I am right, you are wrong. Learnings or aral should have a Marian or in Google or channel or channel, through which 90% of members of the society will pass through. Asalaan, in order to get to God's kingdom, theory has not yet reached the core of men's hearts. Individualism, theft, and selfishness still abound. That is why everyone needs to pass through in Korean or in Google, where the Lord waits as he smiles. No change is possible if things are not pass through this like Korean or common. Some groups now practice this idea. I really would like to request our bishop to give us the opportunity to share with the church that we have learned in our hearts and that the church shares with us. The biggest task of the church is to organize the people. The courage in the movement had no big impact on me. I continue to relate to everyone, even those who got separated from the movement because of the split. I still relate with Kajini, another present leader. People like him have their own instrument. I bear them no grudge. As they say, perfecto is merely a name. Pero yung pag-aaral kapag nauntog at nang ampulan, saka nagkataisip. Learning goes on, having the feet on the head and the heart. That is when you learn. As a believer, it is not realized by the split. I consider what happened as part of the struggle and among the challenges of the times. I have no regret whatsoever that is why I stay here and continue to contribute myself to my life. I continue to strive with other things as I avoid. We lose, it's not the end of the world. Our children are still there after us. Let's prepare them for the time of culture that must be connected with them. So let's proceed by not an understanding. It is my pleasure to share that what I call my life of faith, in creating life through farming, if we lose a come like fish out of water, when the land becomes truly obvious, that is what we call heaven. When things is realized, if the kingdom of God will be ours, we shall then realize it. In life, I have encountered some issues, but I have survived because of God and the number of people who have helped. I never believe in karma, but I always believe there is a God that watches over me. When I was in this, I thought of my life. I succumbed to a number of vices. I stole and plundered, but I have a poem to rally that. My parents told me I was not a bad person. I was the black sheep in the family. I changed slowly. At the same time, I walked on my bended knees, but change one has to do more. Meanwhile, I asked God to punish me whatever 
I have it is I can teach myself how to pay, but it is also painful for others. I hope I will never go astray again. I say even to my family that you are also making mistakes if you get angry. Hatred and writing what is real. If I were to draw the picture of the world to me, I would have to be him as on the right side. Today, suffering Jesus people, if it would be possible that the whole world would realize that Jesus is at present holding at Calvary, the blood would crown on his head. The country that the people of the whole world are so sad. Teenagers of spring. On the one hand, there is the caring cross of the family together with the other hand is surmounting it as we pass through the funnel, word without crown of thorns. There we see God smiling. There is no longer the crown of thorns. It is God's tagging harahan that, that pervades. God's kingdom is now slowly coming. People may remember me for things I may have said or for my words. For example, I had said, All change must pass through a balloon as God reigns on. It may be forgotten, my words, not my words. I may be gone, and hear people say, I cannot forget that. They must listen, that is Connor's story. He said that. It is from him I heard that. Where is forever? Thank you for this opportunity. It has taken such a good moment in my mind. I don't know. Let's do that. That's. You, brother, and son. I suggest we will have to spend two minutes of silence just to digest, maybe reflect on what we have heard, uh, not just from the story of Canestor, but also with uh, the inputs, the sharings that I, I put forward. And this is to process what we have heard. So next slide. Let us have a short moment of silence. Store is one of the many stories of struggle, uh, people joining with people, people committing themselves to the struggle. Now, uh, if we can have, by the way, before we move on, the story was one of the 16 stories that we have in this book published by ISA 16 stories of people who have involved. Uh, in the movement, and then uh, with many realizations, how their faith has moved them, how their faith has strengthened them. Ngayon, ang gagawin ko natin ay uh, five minutes po. No, wala, wala pa namang alas dose, so we're still uh, on track sa time. Yung magkakatabi lang, just share sa inyong uh, katabi kung ano yung Nagre-take ninyo na striking para sa inyo 
ano yung mga pumasok din sa isip mo ngayon? Ano yung mga images na lumabas yung narinig natin ang uh, uh, um, um, kwento ni Canisto? But also think, thinking about the Anawim, you know, being prophets, uh, being on a journey. So you may share sa inyong um, katabi kung ano, mga dalawa o tatlo kung uh, yung isa ay walang kasama, gawing tatlo. We will spend five minutes for that. Para sa inyong sharing. So, sa inyo pagbabahaginan dyan. Hindi natin umubusin ng time sa pagbabahaginan. Ato. Okay na. Pwede na tayong bumalik. Sige, so maybe we can have time for one or two shows for the big group. Baka merong gustong mag-share ngayon dito sa big group kung ano yung napagbahaginan nyo, ano yung binahagi mo, ano yung narinig mo para for us to also uh, to process what we will hear. Sa siguro dito na side, sa dito na side. Sino gusto mong dito sa kabilang side? Short lang, short sharing lang po. Ati Ophel? Ah, si Ati Ophel daw. I will try my best. Yung kwento, um, parang sinasalarawan niya that based on his experiences, he was a prophet all throughout. And he made himself as a uh, a symbol of gratitude by being uh, in service to the people. Yun yung nakita ko sa kwen. Salamat po, class, dito sa kabila, na side. 
Si Brother Sunny. We are happy na meron tayong taga-UST. Taga-UST to. <laughs> so, I'm so happy this in the story because he was a hope, but uh, be, be, uh, be the same of his difficulties, his experiences, he became a part of uh, at least experience. So it, it is not a hindrance to become a prophet to other people, his uh, difficulties in life. So it is a message to us all that even though we experience difficulties, but beside of that, we can make the difficulties as a stepping stone to become a symbol to, a symbol of hope to others. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Zani. Uh, we can continue sharing. Mamaya, siguro may lunch. Mamaya, pag nagkakainan, pwede kayo mag-share pa rin. Pero, um, tutuloy tayo. We have heard those kind of stories from many people. And yet, we also have to reflect on how we can also do something. So, ngayon, six years na ang Anawi Mission, you have done many things for people, but there might be more that you can do. So you have to reflect on this. In the afternoon session, baka meron kayo pag-usapan tungkol sa inyong program, di ko ba? So, ngayon, Bansi sa ating mga nanginig kanina, mga stories, uh, stories and also the story of Kanye Um These are some of the challenges that I would like to pose. No? How to live out. How to live out our being prophets and our being anawin. Di ba? And on a journey. Number one, to do a lecture to you now, if you uh, are not familiar with it, stupid. No? It's true. Uh, Philippians 2, 1 to 11. And then we should to lay down your life for a friend by openly sharing your most difficult struggle lately as a true act of service to your friend, hoping that this will be received as a precious gift coming from your own heart. Pray for a sincere effort at reaching out with utmost sensitivity. Number two, na parang hangin, how to live out. Uh, explore possibilities for a meaningful and concrete engagement with social justice. And four, ease concerns locally even. It can be done. Ask yourself how you can make a small change in your own world. What sacrifice or sacrifices are you willing to make? What can you personally um, hmm. Can you personally give up to make something happen? Kahapon, puntuhan kami ni Rico, we were in a meeting, pero may binahagi siya na isang grupo sa US no, ay sumulat na gusto makipag-partner sa Anawin. Na magpapagala sila ng mga nag-immersion dito tapos anawin will prepare. Siguro, lugar, kung ano pa. And there, there would be processing and experience. But that can be part of together, seeing and building commitment no, sa lahat. No? And that's very inspiring. Next is... Please, yeah. Uh, as you reflect on the challenge, challenge or challenges of pursuing downright mobility, ano yung ibig sabihin yan? Um, medyo sakit na yung balakang, advanced na yung iba, di ba? Habang may nasa strong, kung saan, matal, yung pag-ibig sa iyo. Ang nasan yan, especially yun sa mga uh, kung ate natin, ako kasama doon, no? Uh, so, so as you yung downward mobility in your current life situation, identify some concrete steps you can take to simplify your life. Para makapagpatuloy pa rin sa gagawin. And start acting on them accordingly. Perhaps deliberately cutting out some of your high-profile activities. Wala na tayo sa mga 
high profile activities. Go na tayo, nag-photo siguro, quiet to the poor and underprivileged. Perhaps an away mission can be the venue for that. Away from the limelight and the applause of others. Hindi na tayo nagkapakilt at uh, naghihingi ng mga uh, praise and ano, picture picture. So, downward na rin yung mobility natin. Mag-a-adjust tayo. But we also have to recognize that we have our younger uh, brothers and sisters here. Maraming pa yan sila mga energies. So, expect much from them. Consistency from us. We expect consistency, consistency and then adjustments para patuloy pa rin yung gagawin natin. So, what are some of, uh, what are some other self-emptying acts as you can do that to improve the life giving for others? Next slide, please. Uh, hindi na tayo, wala na tayong silence siguro. This is a prayer. And uh, I would like to ask everyone, this would be uh, the last two or three slides. We read together and uh, pray this prayer. Crucified and risen Lord, together you set us an example, teaching us to do as you did, seeking not to be served, but to serve, and to live no longer for ourselves, but for love of you and those around us. Teach me to live fully in you so that I can have real life to give generously to others. Help me to lay down my illusions of protecting myself as I learn to walk in the way of your cross and find that your life grows in me as I seek your death and resurrection rather than my own preservation. Give me today someone to serve in this love that you have put into my heart. Happy birthday, Anna Wee Mission. Good years to come. Agudaluhin, patuloy na maglingkod, at umasa. Meron kaya yata? Wala na? So, maraming maraming salamat po. The very inspiring reflection. And we have more on that because we are now calling our sisters from Iskalabrinian to give a special song number. Come on, come on, come on. For lunch. Yeah, and after that, we will call again Father Rico to um, give a special uh, citation to our resource speaker. Need the mic. Good evening. Good afternoon po, everyone. We will sing a song. It's in Bahasa.
Thank you. Yeah. We will explain about the song. Um, this song is uh, just connected with the reflection that we have as Father was shared also. It's about our, our uh, uh, even uh, there is difficulties, the struggles that we have in our life. We need to always uh, thank the Lord and be grateful with what we have and what we felt in our life. And also, um, we need to be uh, never give up in our life. That's all from us. <laughs> I ask uh, Father Rico and Father uh, Esmeralda to please come up here on stage as we present this certificate of appreciation to Father Esmeralda for his talk or, or for his reflection, theological reflection on the sixth founding anniversary of Anawim Mission sa mga mahihirap on this uh, fifth day of April 2024, presented or uh, signed by Father Rico Ponce, the Farm President. Um, we will now uh, have lunch for uh, around uh, maybe 30 minutes, then uh, we resume and uh, we expect uh, the same uh, attendance afterwards. Uh, thank you very much for being around for this first part of our program. May we invite you now for the prayer before uh, meals. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Bless us, O Lord, and these are gifts which we are about to receive from your goodness through Christ our Lord, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Enjoy. Don't be in a rush because there is a message, uh, another inspiring message from uh, Archbishop Antonio J. Legosma. This will give us more energy so that we could proceed to our afternoon program. Thank you. Yes.
All right, thank you so much, Archbishop Ledesma. Uh, he can make it today as uh, attending this face-to-face -face gathering because he is nagtuturo din siya. He has a class and at the same time, may mga meetings na gagawin. For now, additional inspiration, let's call on a group of singers from the Carmelites. Trials. Pantahin. Eva, get ready.
sa ating program ay isang uh, testimony from uh, the Evangelical uh, Church and from Payatas, si Pastor Jack Busejo Alvarez. Pastor. Ngayon ko sa inyo, na yung bag nga maling, maupay na hapon. So, I'm representing uh, yung ating pong anawang mission sa Payatas. At uh, I'm grateful na bahagi pa ako ng ministering ito sa mga mahihirap. No? So, konting kasaysayan at kaligiran ng Payatas. Yung Payatas po, kung pamilyar kayo sa Commonwealth, Batasan, ano, yan po ay banang likod lang, tabi ng bagong silangan, and padadaanan yung Atos Road going to Muntalban or Rodriguez Rizal. So, karoon ng isang court resolution para i-create yung Barangay Payatas. 1976, nung nagsimula ang magtapo ng basura doon, at ang mga panahon yun ay purulan, uh, talahiban, at palayan pa ang payatas. Ano? Especially yung lugar kung saan uh, nagkaroon ng tambakan. So payatas means payat. Payat sa taas. Ito ay salita o te, mga magsasaka. Kasi sa farming, hindi, hindi lang gusto doon sa banang taas kasi Payat ang lupa doon. Ano? So, payat sa taas. So, nung panahon ni Mayor Simon, ibinukas ang payatas sa mga informal settlers or squamish squatters. So, kung saan saan galing yung mga informal settlers na yan at tinambak po nila sa payatas at yung mga subdivisions doon ay na halos hindi naman napupuntahan ng mga may-ari ay na tirahan na natayuan na ng mga uh, mahihirap. Yung mahihirap pong ito ay mga kababayan natin from Mindanao, from North Luzon, from Southern, mga Tipulano, Bisaya, Waray, Ilocano, Daghan, mga Bisaya dito, ano, mga Ilonggo, mga Tanan ng Pasaway, nagkanto na dito, upod man ko, isa ko to. So, yan po, ano. And then, I think, 1980s, 1980s kasi sir, deep or 90s. And then nandun na rin yung mga Vincentian. I'm not so sure yati sa Area A, nag-start din ang mga Jesuit doon. But yung Vincentian, malakas yung kanilang presensya sa lupong pangato o Area A. We have three, three parishes in Payatas. Area A, Pedro Calusod, at yung iba ng lupong pangako adun sa aming area, sa urban, sa lutang pa nga ako, ano. And I think also have puso ng ama uh, under Paul uh, Oyuidimo, isang Julian Gritis na yung society Missionaries of God's Love, ano, MGL. So, father of the known uh, personality in Payatas. And then Most likely, we have 200 born-again churches in Payatas, evangelical born-again churches. Sabi na 300, pero in my counting, it's good to, I think it's safe to say around 200 evangelical born-again churches. These are small churches in Payatas. No? May mga mainline evangelical doon, like the Reform, the May Dating Alliance, may mga Baptist and Apo. But most likely, the born-again churches are independent churches and they are small congregations, most likely 20 to 50 people only. But there are many pastors there. Ano. So I'm not so sure if my IF I don't, but I think Area A, sabi ni Father Johnny. And we have PBMA, Dating Daan, United Pentecostal Church. We have Muslim or Mos in Payatas. And we have also friends from Bayan Muna. I don't know kung may, may akbayan din doon. Ano. So, 
Well, at kami sa bawat isang mahalaga at sa Payatas Evangelical Movement. So, maraming mission groups at NGOs na yumaman po sa Payatas. Especially, nung gumuho ang tambakan, July 10, 2000, nagkaroon ng malakas na ulan, at yung tambakan doon na hindi pa naman manage sa Quezon City, gumuho po yun, at ayon sa media, around 200 people died. Hindi na na-retreat ng mga bangkay. But people, local people na nandoon, they're arguing now more or less 1,000 people died. Ano? At dahil doon, bumagsa ang mga NGO, mga mission groups sa payatas. At ang sabi ng kaibigan mong kagawad na maging kapitan, yung mga 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 NGO sa payatas. So, if you would research, payatas would have 160 people. 100,000 people, 160,000 people. Pero uh, we're not so sure on this. I agree with other Purimi Dimo na we have at least ha, more or less half million people in Payatas. Kasi yung aming registered voters are 70,000 na sa barangay. So there are more people in Payatas than the province in Ipugawa. So mataas ang krimen. May tatong drug lord sa payatas. Sa doon, police, politiko, at isang madam. At dalawa lang dating ay naging tatlo naman. So maraming kaso are A6165, dangerous uh, drug board. Ano? At uh, huli tingin ko sa police station 13 because I serve with human nature, a, a Christian company, you know, with uh, an alliance pastor and with puso ng ama, we have 118 doon sa small detention center namin and 39 males and 6 females were involved sa RA-9165, meaning drugs. May kaso ng rape, may murder, carnapping, at doon sila nagsisiksika. So after, after Lent and Easter, mas dumami pa yung tao, ano? Parang mahina yung ating uh, spiritualidad. At dahil marami ng parami yung mga tao doon. So gutom po yung mga tao yung sa payatas. Like ko po nasabi, because maraming kapitbahay, kabarangay, pumupunta sa simbahan namin, maliit na simbahan namin, asking for rice. Fortunately, we have some rice at talaga namang binibigyan namin sa mga kasama sa church members and for the neighbors, and for the widows, widowers na mga neighbors namin. So, kaunti lang naman po yun. At gutom talaga mga tao. Ang presyo ng bigas, minimum 53, senior na. Yung 20 pesos, wala talaga yun. Scam talaga yun. Ano. So, yung problema ang palupa doon, tabahay at hanap buhay, trabaho. Yung mga obrero po ay nanggagaling sa mga barangay na yan, payatas, bagong silangan, muntalban, damdam tao sa muntalban, ano? laki ng ira niyan. So, dumadaan lahat ng payatas yan. So, galing yung mga obrero sa lugar na ito. No? So, yung local politics natin sa payatas is not good. Trapong trapo. But fortunately, dahil may kaso siyang corruption, malversation of fun, natanggal siya, hindi siya nakatakbo. Pero yung pumalit sa kanya, kinausap niya yun ang nanalo at atang trapo din. And another <laughs> sad thing is the pastors, let me say, sip-sip yung mga pastor doon. These, these are born-again pastors and some of them some of them are even prosperity preachers. Ano? So sip-sip sila doon kay Kapitan. And I could even say, as I observe, even yung mga kaparean natin ay hindi ganun ka-transformative or ka-radical in addressing local corruption. So, ano pong pwedeng gawin natin sa payatas? Uh, let me humble uh, propose the we need to strengthen our ecumenical fellowship. Yung anawing presence doon na ecumenical. Yung synodality, Catholic term, pero at least kami mga evangelicals ay maging malakas ang uh, aming fellowship at dapat transformative talaga no? yung aming ginagawa. Social justice. And then, yeah, 
the church, the evangelical churches, with the Catholic parishes work for human flourishing and social justice. Number two, human rights, youth camp. We had our ecumenical youth camp, di ba? Uh, with Sister Beth, doon sa, uh, I forget the, intan ng Sora. So, dapat ituloy yung ganun po. So, but we should offer retreat then for the mothers. Ano? Gusto nila yan eh. At especially, we should focus din sa mga bata, bata at kananayan, kababaihan. Number three, let's invest for spiritual and leadership formation. At uh, we need homegrown lay leaders doon. Or sa amin, mga homegrown pastors na mataas ang consciousness ng konsensya nila sa pusti siyang panlipunan. Uh, and then, number four, partner with makabayan groups. Bayan muna, some of them, the leaders are my neighbor, actual and already partnering with them. Kaya ako baka ma-red tag din ano, dahil uh, very close ako sa mga nanay. And some of the BMR women are already attending our church actually. And the number five, engage barangay politics. And so far, I don't see the pastors doing that. Ano, sip-sip nga sila eh. And even the, the, the area A please, and even my friend who is uh, uh, nandoon sa parokya sa amin, no? hindi ganun ka-transformative. So, sana no? malakas yung aming social justice, yung social teaching. So, we need to engage barangay politics. We need people doon sa, sa barangay development council at kung ano pa pong pwedeng gawin doon. So, ito po yung nangyayari sa payatas at palakasin natin yung anawing mission doon. Maraming pong salamat. Makaming uh, salamat, uh, Pastor Jack. Uh, yes, we welcome Bishop Diogasia Sinigas. Sorry kasi daw, ano, um, meron siyang gawain ni sa pa kaninang umaga. So, thank you, Bishop, for raising our activity today. Um, I wish also to, would you like to say? <laughs> Sige. Dito na lang po. Pastor Jack, alam ko nagmamadali ka, pero thank you so much for um, sharing some information and at the same time uh, pagbibigay ng images kung ano yung tura ng uh, payatas sa ngayon, mga anawin. Pero teka muna, sino yung tatlong drag lords? Anong pangalan niya? Ah, okay. May madam doon. So, tatandaan natin ha, yung mga mag exposure sa payatas. Si polis? Ay, si madam? Politiko? May isa at los, si madam, si politiko. Puta na nga, kompleto. Sige, anyway, uh, bishop ka, nag-report lang si Pastor Jack uh, kung ano yung itsura ng uh, payatas sa ngayon because most of our focus ng director for Anawim Anna is payatas. But we can expand later. This point in time, you would like to acknowledge the presence of our stone supporter from the United States. His name is Bob Halili. Uh, perhaps, Bob, can you say something and can you open your camera? Okay. There you are. Uh, Bob, can you say something about yourself? Um, magandang hapon po. Uh, what can I say? Um, my name is Bobby Hurley. Uh, ako po ay uh, pumunta dito sa Amerika in 1980. Wala po ng 1980. 
And uh, when I at the age of 25, uh, uh, ngayon I senior citizen na. Um, I am a retired teacher. Nagturo sa sa community college America for 17 years. Uh, teaching sociology. Um, and uh, I'm also currently um, a non-profit board member ng one organization and a non-profit consultant of uh, two other organizational entities uh, in uh, Southern California within my particular diocese. Ang diocese ko po is the Catholic Diocese of uh, San Bernardino. And um, uh, thank you po for, for the invitation. Uh, I've narinig ko na yung anonym. I think it's been one or two years. And if I'm not mistaken, yung nakasumbrero dyan sa front row, I I think he, he's one of the persons I talked to or or conversed with the last time. Eh. Naka-attend na rin yata ako ng ano, eh, fifth anniversary, is it fifth or fourth anniversary celebration ng Anna Wim. So, so right now, uh, ako po yung humihingi ng ng um, pahintulot na mag-exposure sa Pilipinas sa mga komunidad na mga maralita at ang inahanap po namin dito isang organization na faith-based hindi lang nagko-conduct ng exposure trip kundi a faith-based organization nagko-conduct ng ng immersion trips and uh, may nagbanggit na Anawim is the one that conducts that so kaya po ko nan nandito yeah that Sana. would be, Sige po. that would be very welcome Bob um and you're on the right track so we look forward to working with you through this immersion program and you're right the the man with the hat is Tito brother Tito who's been with the Redemptorists for a long time. And uh, most of the conveners of Anawim are a church place or faith place. So you're on the right track. Thank you so much for attending this uh, sixth anniversary. We also have with us Bishop Leo Gracia Siniguez. He's uh, a Catholic um, bishop and is based in um, Divine Mercy in Marilao, Bulacan. Thank you, Bob. See you. All right. May you wanna. Meron tayong hope. Meron tayong um, direction na po pwedeng uh, pag-aaralan ng mabuti with you and with the help of other people outside the country. Especially so that Bishop Iniguez is here with us. Anyway, for our next, let's uh, hear from Father Juni. Um, he's going to present a report what has been in the past uh, one year uh, kung ano yung naging activity ng uh, Anna Wim. So, let's watch it. Si Father Juni Cabellas po is an IFI priest uh, and based in PowerPoint. Oh, she has it. Yeah, ng PowerPoint ni Father Juni. Kasi sabi niya maggagawa siya na Nasa La Union, uh, may clergy convocation sila. Mm -hmm. So, we can. Ito po ang mga different activities na 
pinagkaabalahan ng mga Anawin Mission conveners in the past year, itong 2023, 2024, until March. So Anawin Mission declared that the celebration of the fifth founding anniversary of Anawin Mission was successful. The challenge is how can the participants of that ecumenical gathering can share in their own ways or by joining in another mission as missionaries. So interested individual, please contact your nearest AM leader or member. So there are a few of the Anawim leaders and members in this room. If you are interested, please um, talk to them. Ang BMG po ng Anawi Mission is, one, yung vision niya is Anawi Mission para sa may hirap incorporated and visions a community where there is harmony, unity, solidarity, peace, and fullness of life. Ang mission niya, its mission is to live out an immersion, listening, and encountering processes building, networking, and organizing church people to help form the Anawim communities. Gather and manage resources for the organization. And in the join in the Anawim struggle for social justice, prayer of creation, and lasting peace. Yun po yung uh, vision mission niya. And the goals are loans and hold immersion, listening and encountering processes of church people, Invite church people to be part of AMI as networks and or members. Join and participate in the Anawim's emancipa emancipatory projects and encourage members and friends to support AMI, either moral, financial, and material resources. The engagement niya were the following meetings, planning, assessment. And then awareness, yung fora, awareness raising niya is fora, immersion, study reflection. So organizing niya, we invite church people to be members or network in organizing basic ecumenical communities. And so humanitarian, of course, yung mobilization and assistance, release statements and newsletters. So those are um, some of the few uh, photos which we can share with you what it has been with the Anawim. And po yung kanyang education and services. Some cap day care graduation July 12, 2023. And yung binabanggit ni Pastor uh, Jack Panina na nagkaroon ng Ecumenical Youth Camp who creates one of those uh, active um, participants or supporters uh, was Sister Beth of the Escalabrinian. And then there was this uh, partnership with different uh, people's organizations and institutions, yung um, launching ng book ng Free Pen and Rita uh, to development workers who were um, who were uh, arrested somewhere in Negros. That was six years ago. Yeah, that was six years ago. And up to this day, as we speak, they are still behind bars. Walang krimeng nagawa, only their uh, conviction. Yun lang yung kasalanan nila. And then, yung Sangkap Daker Center, nag-instad sila ng mga meetings from there that is based in Payatas. And then, nag-co-sponsor din siya ng Justice in Palestine. I am sure that you are updated with what is happening right now in Palestine at mukhang nag -e escalate ang gera ng U.S. Ginagamit, let us bear in our minds that this is a proxy war and not solely as Israel genocide against or war against the Palestinian people. 
maybe we can have some um, um, discussions about that maybe later in the month or later in the coming days. Tapos, nagkaroon ng year-end gathering with Payatas community last December 15. So, there were a few of us who came uh, sa mga Carmelites at that time. And then, nagkaroon din ng medical and dental mission program that was last February 9. Maraming nag-participate ng mga uh, student doctors, medical doctors, and mga volunteers. And now today, the sixth anniversary of the Anawim Mission. Malakuhan po natin ang ating mga sarili. Yan. Ang uh, mga naganap. And there is, like what I was saying a while ago, um, big hope that uh, our immersion program would foster because of the um, um, plan and aspirations of our friends from the United States through Bob Halili, then we will work together on that. So, para sa Anawi Mission, malaking bagay po ito at malaking pasasalamat. Father, meron ka pang maidadagdag? Wala na. So, for our next, Brother Tito, are you ready? Who? Oh. Ah, okay. Tagdag na energy. Bishop, gusto ka nilang marinig. Ang iyong inspirational talk. Alit ka na. Just give us a hope, Bishop, that amidst of the Filipino and the Palestine struggle, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, to you all, a uh, very, very uh, blessed occasion for this meeting. So uh, I'm sorry that I could not come on time because I had two masses to, uh, I was engaged in. But uh, I tried to come here just to be able to see you again and to be in communication again with Anawim for a long time, I've not been able to do anything or to attend any of the affairs. That's why uh, I took even just this uh, little time to be able to be one with you, to get some inspiration, and even perhaps also to give inspiration so that uh, we can uh, really uh, understand more and devote ourselves more to the aims, to the goal of other way. So I'm very, very happy to see you here and your very presence is pretty, a very, very great encouragement for me to stay and to get involved in the other way mission. Thank you very much. Bishop. So next, Brother Tito. Good afternoon. My name is Tito. Sagabi Tita. Joke, <laughs> joke. And, uh, Sorry, most of my talk would be in English kasi galing po ako sa LA, sa Lower Antipolo. <laughs> and mga foreigners kasi dito and so ganun na lang po. Uh, ang binigay sa akin na trabaho nila Father Rico and Company ay to project kung ano yung general programs and services ng Anawim for this year. And um, of course, in any projection, dapat tingnan natin yung context o yung external scanning baga and internal capacities mula doon kapag uh, bongga tayo kung ano yung possible gagawin by in, in the future. 
in terms of context, kanina pa natin pinag-usapan yung context. In terms naman sa internal capacity, sinabi na ni Father Dodo kanina yung wellspring, yung pinanggagalingan na saan natin hinuhugot yung pagka-missionaryo natin. Of course, whether we like it or not, missionaryo talaga tayo kasi by sa virtue ng baptism natin, lalong-lalo na sa confirmation, walang, wala tayong magagawa kung hindi magiging missionaryo. So, ang... Kung susumahin natin, ang malaking problema talaga ng anawim, both anawim na by choice at saka anawim na walang choice, ay yung material or yung economic crisis, crisis ekonomiya. Pagkising sa umaga, hindi mo alam kung anong kakainin. Minsan, kung ano lang tanga talaga yung noodles na... Ano ba yun? Noodles tapos... Tinatiyan pa yan ng anim na families, of na members ng family. Tapos, problema pa doon, trabaho, anong gagawin ko? So, it's basically economic problems, livelihood, talagang hirap sa mga anim. Hindi sila tamad. Uh, talagang wala lang ano, uh, livelihood na nakakabuhay ang um, So, sa payata, syempre, mamumulot ng basura or ngayon, dinadaan na lang yung mga mag magagandang basura doon tapos sinusort out no? and, and things like that. And also, pag sinabi nating ano, women, second big problem ay yung housing crisis. Yun, yung bahay nila. Uh, tapos, marami namang program ng government sa housing mula sa Project 1 hanggang Project 8. Alam nyo kung saan ang Project 1? Para sa mahirap sana yun eh. Alam natin yung Project 2, Project 3, Project 4, Project 5. Project 5. Project 1 yung Teachers Village. Para sana ito mahirap yun. Wala. All the housing project ng gobyerno ay inaagaw ng meron. Project 1 yung Teachers Village. Project 2 nandyan pa rin ngayon. Project 3, Project 4. Project 5. Ano yun? Ha? Hindi. Ano pa yung Project 6 pa rin yun eh? Yung isang subdivision na bank dyan sa Delta Banda, yung buong package ng 5 na yan, kinuha ng banko. So mga, mayroong mga flexi homes, etc. etc. So, wala, so sa Metro Manila, ilan ang mamamayan? How many people in Metro Manila? Depende, daytime, nighttime. Nighttime, it's about uh, 12 million. 13, 13 million during the daytime. Sa nighttime, mga 12 million. Sa 12 million, mga 4 million, 3.5 to 4 million doon ay nakatira sa slums. Ibig sabihin, ang, ang, alam niyo naman kung anong tirahan ng slums. So, pag nagbilang ka ng mga tao makita mo sa Metro Manila, apat doon, ay nakatira sa slums. Grabe yung housing crisis na inaabot ng, ng ating mga kapatid na nawi. Of course, walang katapusang violations of democratic rights. Ayan, demolition. Ang pinaka-worst na violation of democratic rights ay yung demolition. Ayan, nakasama kami lagi ni La Bishop dati when we were I was working sa TFUC. Hindi ko din mga taga TFUC. Ano namin hinaharap yung uh, wasakin lang ba naman yung bahay mo tapos tatapon ka kung sa kalayo-layo na walang hanap buhay. No, kagaya ng payatas, saan ang mga taga payatas galing? Dito sa Quezon City, dyan sa gilid-gilid. Tapos, nag-demolish. Dinila sa... <laughs> sa so, payatas ngayon i-demolish na naman sila no wala pa hindi kami binibigyan ng title kasi nga na not fit daw for human habitation so we also have problems related to basic social services tubig ilaw mga ilaw ay kung saan-saan na lang ah <laughs> uh, hinuhugot etc kaya marami din minsan tapos ang uh, daming saksakan kaya wala nang katapos ang sunog grabe yung sunog sa tondo ngayon gabi-gabi may sunog 
Tapos, an environmental crisis. Grabe. Ang environmental crisis sa loob ng slums. Anyway, ito yung kalagayan ng mga basic problems ng ating mamamay. But in general, anong kalagayan? Ayun, halos punong-puno ng apathy ang mamamayan. Kahit ano na lang ang nangyayari, pero wala, parang walang pake. Parang siguro sinanay na talaga sila sa tiis. Tiis! No? Tiis dito, tiis doon. Tapos, um, kulala. Bahala na si Batman na attitude. Tapos kanya-kanyang diskarte na lang. Ganyan yung kalagayan. Tapos, sa 3.5 to 4 million na mga anawim sa Metro Manila, 98% ay unorganized. Kung organized man, ay organized na traditional. So basically, ang orientation ay mendicant. Hmm? Organisado sila para pakahingi ng pabor sa gobyerno. Kasi mas gusto ng gobyerno tulungan yung mga medyo organisado. But, Do they really understand kung anong dahilan, anong ugat ng kahirapan? Usually, pag tinanong mo, 99% ng tatanungin mong mamamayan ng anawin, ba't po tayo mahirap? Kasi po, yun ay kalooban ng Diyos. So, si Lord pa yung may, may, uh, siya pa yung, <laughs> siya pa yung dahilan bakit ka naghirap. Si po talagang kanya ng gulong ng palad. Ang problema, ito yung ikot ng gulong ng palad. Bakit? Nandito lang ako lagi sa ilalim. Ba't pag-ikot na naman, nandito lang ako sa ilalim. Tapos pa, paano yung tutuloy yung kamay, walang palad? <laughs> diba? Ba't ito yung common? Tanungin mo. Ito yung common na, na dahilan. Uh, Kaluwa ng Diyos? Alat po yan, kapalaran po yan, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, matindi sa social media. Of course, kahit walang kinakain yan, marami po yung cellphone niya. At mas nauubos pa minsan ang marami pera sa loob kaysa pagkain. No? And uh, pag, pag social media, dahil syempre punong-puno na yan ng fake juice. At saka, Um, you know, intention niya na para limuta, limutin to forget all the problems. Yung parang sinasabi ni Christy per minute na anaho na talagang kalimutan ng problema. Wave it I work. Dati nung panahon namin, bata-bata pa, medyo bata pa ako, na dadivert yung attention namin sa Crispa Toyota. Wow! Sa Crispa Toyota basketball na yan, ang hihinap mag-meeting sa komunidad, no? Si Chris Patriota yan, di ba? Uh, ngayon, ang hirap mong mitingin ng komunidad kasi nandun yung batang batang kiyapo. Yun. Pag hindi pa madalas sa diversion na ganyan, itrag mo. Itrags. Para ang mga tao, wala ng tulala na para wala ng time para mag-usap-usap kung ano yung punot tulo na ang hirapan. And so, isa pang problema talagang okay lang sabi ni, sino ba yung master yung nasabing when someone, when I give a food, they call me same. But when I ask why they are poor, they call me communist in which he, a bishop or Oscar Romero. Siya yung may sabi noon, no? na pag nagbigay ka sa mahirap, santo ka. Pero pag nagtanong ka, ba't ka mahirap te? Ala, kuminista ka na. And left tagging is all over the place. And anong dating yung takot kaya? Takot and tremble. So, yun yung kalagayan, yung general atmosphere sa komunidad. Anong response natin? Of course, karamihan doon ay Uh, uh, there are three possible responses actually apart three possible kung may anuhim na mahirap charitable ang approach pinibigay natin ng red pagkain 
that's good. Kaya lang okay lang yan sa panahon ng krisis. No? Panahon ng suno, panahon ng sakuda. Pero kung may problem kasi yung charity, after after mabibigyan yung tinapay, bukas, hihingi ng tinapay. Wala nang katapusan yun. Di ba? Uh, tapos, wala nang dignidad yung tao. So, yun yung problem na may good siya, may bad din siya. Uh, tapos, tuwang tuwa yung mga mayayaman noon at mga oppressors, parang rapist. Tuwang tuwa siya sa mga na-rape niya kasi may si sister, nandiyan si sister at saka si pastor, magbibigay ng counseling sa na-rape niya. So, pero kung ang sister ay nagtatanong o ang pastor o si father ay naghahabon doon sa rapist, klima, ayaw nila yon. So, most of the institutions, gustong-gusto lang talaga nila charitable kasi doon nila binibigay yung fund nila kasi tuloy-tuloy nilang ano, uh, uh, tuloy-tuloy nilang i-exploit yung mga tao may simbahan naman na sasalo ng diktiman nila. Yun yung problem niyan. Then we also have second approach. E sige na nga, uh, bigyan natin siya ng isda pagkatapos turuan natin siyang mangingisda, no? To, to just give him fish, teach him how to fish para tuloy-tuloy siyang mabuhay. But again, the problem is, ano, ang um, sige nga, gawin mo yun sa Laguna de Bay kung saan kami galing sa Rizal din. Kaya ang Laguna de Bay, puno-puno na ng fish pen. Hindi ka lang, lumapat ka lang dun sa fish case nila, binaparil ka ng mga So, magbigay ka ng, kami, nagbigay dati ng mga net. Bumalik sa amin ng mga pangingisda. So, Dre, wala na kaming pangisdaan doon. Pinaghatian na nila yung Laguna. No? Uh, ng mga mayayamang mga pangingisda. And even if mag-develop ka ng cooperative, etc., etc., walang parang panakipbutas na lang kasi the whole economic order ay control talaga ng mga malalaking negosyo. Sila yung nagdi-dictate ng ng ano, presyo ng kalay. Ah, may may uh, dati may nag-initiate ako ng ano, buy diretso sa farmer sa South Cotabato, punta ng Manila. First batch lang okay. Second batch ayaw nang ikarga ng boat. Basta may ari ng boat, mga malaking boat yung mga rice trader na mga malalaki na cartel ng rice. So, saan ka diba? So, tama naman yung cooperative pero may limit lang talaga siya. So, the, the, the other approach is of course the style ng ano, WIM and most of our ano, folks. We do charity, we build cooperatives, but we go liberational. Liberational means we ask anong dahilan ng kahirapan mo te. Ba't ka may sakit, Rosario? Diba? Saan? Tumat ka ba nga ba talaga? Hindi naman eh. Pag tinignan mo yung mga pobre, grabe yan. Pag ginawakan mo yung kamay ni Kuya Nestor, grabe ang kapal ng, ng kanyang palad. Sasabihin mo sa kanya po, amal. So, ito yung when we talk about liberational approach ng ng ano we legal charity we give cooperatives but we ask also at saka tatrayte talaga kami doon sa usapin ng ano ang ugat ng kahirapan bakit tuloy-tuloy yung mahirap bunga ba ito ng struktura at sistema ng lipunan natin kung bunga ito bakit hindi Anong struktura yan? Anong pan yan? Anong saysayan yan? Et cetera, et cetera. Talagang mahalong kati. And therefore, pag, da, pag ganyan na yung approach mo, wala na masyadong magbigay sa'yo ng tulong ng mga mayayaman. Kasi kini-question mo na sila. But dapat lang naman eh, tuloy-tuloy kang nagbibigay ng counseling sa mga rape victims, sa, sa drug victims. Tapos hindi ka nagtatanong kung sino mga nagre-rape do. Sinong nagbibigay ng mga drugs to? Once you do that, wala. Makina, makado. Wala tayong, ano, wala tayong way kung gagawin talaga. Dapat pa rin talaga, ano, 
but ang mga lahat ng ito, sino makakasagot? Oh, ano win din eh. Tayo din mga mahihirap. Kung organize lang tayo ng matino na para yung pananaw, liberational yung gawain, tapos may magandang struktura. Kasi ang hirap eh ang kumilos na liberational o anumang social work na nag-iisa ka. Kaya nga mayroong mga congregations eh. Hindi kaya ni Father Rico o ni Father Dudo na mag-isa. Kailangan nila ng tropa. No? Kailangan ng mga madre ng tropa to love and to love radically. Radically means roots, back to the roots of the problem. So yun. So, ang nagbibigay kami ng charity development, pero saan dudulo lahat ito? Sa organizing power ng mamame. But we are nobody to give power. Ang mga tao talaga. Uh, pag na-realize nila yung human dignity nila, together with their human rights, magkakaroon sila ng power. Tapos, um, so yung padawagan na ito, agonize, organize. Parang ganyan. Tapos, nag-guided siya ng anong yung spirituality, which is basically the gospel of coalition, the gospel of rainbow coalition. Ibig sabihin yun, ito yung bago na matay si Jesus, itong prayer niya eh. Lord, sana that they will be one so the world may believe. Ayun yung ang harap talaga ni Jesus. Sana magkaisa sila para mapaniniwala. At naniniwala, nag-aaway-aaway tayong mga pinyari at Christian, no? And what kind, what quality na Christian tayo? Kita mo sa airport. We are the only Christian country in the world. Be careful with your bugs. <laughs> That kind of nominal, pero ano, ang layo pa natin in terms of quality. Ito yung gospel, ano, the spirituality ng ano, we, the gospel of five fingers. Ano yung gospel of five fingers? Sa so Matthew 25, when I was hungry, Ibig daw sasabihin, pag namatay tayo, hindi tayo tanangin kung karmelay ka, Josh Witt ka, or ano, dahil si San Kaua. Ang tanong ay, nung ako yung nagbubuto, pinakain mo ako. Nung ako yung inuhaw, pinainom mo ako. Nung ako yung nasa bilanggo, pinisik mo ako. Nung ako yung hubad, tinamitan mo ako. Nung ako yung nasa hospital, pinisita mo ako. Ito yung gospel of five fingers. O baka tayo nagaling Carmelite? Ba tayo nasa Aglipay? Para magkaroon tayo ng energy. Para dito sa apat. Pero kung nag-Carmelite ka lang to enjoy power and prosperity, parang nag-gasolina na or hindi ka naman tumakbo. Parang ang sarili mo. It's all for your, you know, tawag ka na yung starvation. <laughs> diba? So we join, we join congregations, we join group to help us, you know, love, serve people. Sa gospel of five fingers, tisa na sabi natin gospel of five fingers, and dapat missionary. Ang ano yung spirituality is basically missionary. The missionary means yung damit natin mapuputikan. Sa tanan natin, mapuputikan. Hindi mo. I mean, all Jesus, let's be sa pag-aaling. Sapatos natin. Kung ang sapatos natin ay shine na shine, yung better question. Missionaryo ka nga ba talaga? At ang sinasabi lang naman natin ay, di ba yung statement kasi yung left uh, philosophy or give your Saturday for a better society. Ang challenge nila ng left side, pag ang mamayan, ibinigay na lang nila yung sabatunan, kahit isang araw lang, bago ang lipunan. Sa isang araw lang, mag, ano, mag, magbayanihan yung mamayan sa komunidad, maraming kanal ang malilinisan, maraming roads ang masisimento, maraming things na ma-install. Oh. But of course, hindi naman kailangan sabado yun. Pero ang statement still stands, no? Give your Saturday for a better society. So, ang challenge sa ating ngayon ay, ano, kahit isang araw lang, 
go sa ano win, tapos create a group. Para every every year, makita mo yung pagkudlad ng ating movement. Huwag tayong magkasya sa sa comfort ng ating Zoom, comfort zone na natin ng mga seminarista kami talaga. Pinabawaran kami ng superhero. Ma, maalagwa sa, sa cake. No? Alam lang pumunta. Sa, uh, kasi doon din, din nakakahugot kami ng passion sa integration with, with the poor. So, yun po yun. Uh, ang challenge is be a missionary. missionary. Ikan yung mga mga paa natin at mga chinelas at saka, et cetera, et cetera. Kahit isang, isang araw lang siya, isang, tapos build the school. Kapag meron tayong isang barkada ng mga mahihirap talaga. Na, nakikita natin every week. Nakikidiscuss tayo. Sang, hindi naman kailangan lahat kayo pumunta sa payatas eh. Si Father Johnny nga eh, doon lang sa daang tubo kung saan siya malapit. Eh sa likod-likod ng bahay natin, ang dami. Sa totoo lang. Tingnan mo, lahat tayo gagawa, ilang units ang mag-perform natin. The end of the year. Kaysa tayo-tayo nalang laging nagkikita. So, mayroon ka bang limang pobre na kinikita every, sa every, every once a week? With all the mga titles natin and studies natin, etc. Babalik ka ulit dun sa Gospel of Five Fingers. Therefore, the 12 calls me on ay kung may mapataas ng konti, sana ikita natin. Hello. Number one, drawing in of church people, everybody, para sa legitimate needs and dreams of them. Legitimate, ha? hindi naman lahat ng Mayroong sinasabi natin sa community work na felt need and real need. Parang bata. Gusto ng bata, mga pahili ng candy. Hindi naman candy. Yun yung felt need niya, candy. Pero ang kailangan niya talaga ay kanin. So mas nagre-reply tayo dun sa real need kaysa felt need. Amen? Tapos, uh, to share the liberty a sense of faith and religion. Faith and religion that do justice and also work for lasting peace. Number two, build basic ecumenical communities or BEC form. Ito, families. Magumpasa tayo sa families natin. Grabe kayo ang kalik- kalagayan ng pamilya ngayon. As in, matindi talaga. Doon sa, sa youth camp namin ng yeah, sa Payatas with Pastor Jack, ah, grabe. Matay yung balahibo ko sa mga sumbong ng mga youth sa, sa kanilang tatay, mga nangi, and sa mga kapatid nilang lalaki at mga babae, kung paano sila na, na, ano, na, hmm, ano to, na-exploit. Matindi ang status and family life din. And dahil na sa sa pag-OFW ng mga nang wala si nanay nasa Hong Kong. Ang grabe kaya ng social cost sa mga kuan sa mga naiwan. Ang pinakagrabing experience yun hindi ko talaga makalimutan nung nasa mission ko ako sa labas ng bansa. Yung nanay pa o pabalik na ng Hong Kong. Tapos nasabit yung bata sa mawag, mawag ang umalis, maiyak siya ng iyak. Wow, please, wag kang umalis. Pero yung nanay, gina... <laughs> tapos lakad na sa diretso. Hindi na siya lumingin. Pumunta siya sa Hong Kong para nag ng ibang bata. Tapos yung anak niya na 3-year-old, 4-year-old, niwanan niya. Eh kasi naman, wala naman kasing pera para kahit sa gatas na lang ng bata. Kasi eh, simple lang lang ang kailangan ng bata nating lahat eh. Itlog lang sa umaga at sa gatas, game na eh. Pero sino, 
Di ba? Majority talaga. Hindi kaya bumili ng itlog at gatas. Yun lang yung solusyon sa malnutrition. At ang problema pa natin, pag walang itlog at walang gatas, ang brain ng bata mula year 1 hanggang year 9, hindi dumadami. Magsisik. E nine year old, ang brain cells niya, kukunti na lang ilaban niya sa buhay niya. Aber, samantalang solusyon na yun ay itlog at gatas. And yet, ang society natin cannot provide. Ayun ang malaking, malaking buwan. But anyway, family. So ang BECC really deals siniseryoso na yung family life program. Tapos kapitbahay. The, the best of five lang ng kapitbahay. Kasi kung may sakit ka naman, ano mo, saan ka tutulong? Sinong tutulong sa iyo? Kay si Kuya Nestor, ang layo, taga Rizal. Sinong katakbuhan mo? Hindi yung kapitbahay mo. And yet, ang dami natin problema sa kapitbahay. Naku, tinignan mo yung mga text sa sa payatas. Walang katapusang away ang magkapitbahay. Dahil sa utang. <laughs> ano na, humihiram ng bigas. Hindi pa binabayaran yung isang kilo ng bigas. Dahil humi- ay utang. Karabi talagang away sa magkapitbahay dahil sa utang, dahil sa chismis. So, broken na yung family, broken yung kapitbahay, etc., etc. Yun yung problem natin. So, ano yung mission? I really, ano serious doon sa pag-ayos? Patulong sa family. Tapos kapitbahay and hopefully yung buong community. Etc. Ayan. Tapos, number three, uh, tuloy-tuloy na yan, but uh, do we still have time? But it fell. It fell. Hello? <laughs> Ilang minutes pa. Anyway, na ipapadala naman sa inyo dyan. Uh, mga others ay mga technical na lang talaga yan, no? na mga gawain. So, mainly yun no, ang tutok natin. So, hopefully, mula ngayon, we really hope na tayo ay mag-develop ng be- friends na mga mahirap. Hindi ka kailangan pumunta ng payatas, hindi ka kailangan pumunta ng ibang lugar. Marami yan na uh, sa likod-likod lang ng ating bahay. Okay. I really would like to ask Reverend Nestor to affirm or to add more or to emphasize some things that you think I want. You know, please. Salamat, Tito. Bigla ako din. Alam ko, close ang relation ko. Kung nga ko dati ako. Close na tayo siguro, no? Sabi ko ba? Ah, ang ganda ng pagka-outline ni Tito, no? Uh, wala na ako nakasabi. Let's go put up ng lahat sa kanya yun. But at least, of course, try to simplify yung hinaharap natin challenges talaga. At well, may part. Hindi ko naman tanggol talaga si Mother Rinko, eh. Kasi kaibigan ko. So, he informed me na Sixth year anniversary ng anawin. Kasi sa prodigal son, hindi lang makatanggi. Dahil prodigal son ako ng anawin. So sabi ko, sige, punta ako. Uh, with my busy schedule, no? Talagang nag-alat ako ng time. Kasi mahaba yung mga Netflix series, eh. Hindi mo makat yung mga yun, di ba? Kaya, ang laki nung ano yung sa akin, eh. Ang laki nung ginawa yung disturbance sa cycle ng life ko. Oh, imagine mo yung three body system, bigla akong kinat yung kulot. just to be with you here. Di ba? Then, para lang mag-wonder, bakit kayo nandito for what reason you are gathering here? Hindi ba kayo mo overwhelmed sa problem ng hitunan? Kaya, kaya naman, kaya ba? Ano, yung mga Avengers mo tayo? Kaya itong masalutsyo na yung Avengers mo, natahanan ng lahat ng ati. Just try to imagine yung sa Gaza at sa Palestine. We think yung, yung impact nito later on, kaya natin solusyon ng yun? Yung climate problem? Yung climate collapse? 
hindi tayo nagbabakdown hanggang ating process ng mark. Well, from 38 Celsius to 41, no, umabot tayo ng 50. Ano po yung lahat tayo? Pwede kang magluto ng itlog sa agas. At tingin nyo ba, gaganda pa buhay natin? Pwede, pahuli ko, 62 ka na, 64. Yes, pag mo tayo hiniling yes mo, magbigay ng tulong sa mga kumakatok sa bahay nyo, Pero i-dear mo na lang yan. Mayroon ba ng Netflix? Imagine I reach my age of 50. Ito ang maligit para encourage kayo. When I reach my age of 50, a month ago, sabi ko, I have still remaining five years of finish in my life. I think it is satisfying to spend that 10 years para tumunin sa mga may hirap. Kaya sa kanyang naman kami ng Billy Father, Rico, tsaka ni Tito, tsaka ni Tommy. Tapos na agad si... Biglang, biglang nalita, eh, no? Di ba? And we are in seemingly at the pink of war with China. You no. Know? Especially nang naiba ang klase ng geopolitical policy ng ating presidente. And anytime, could there be a war at na-engage tayo doon? Do we have Ukraine? Do we have billionaires around us? Of course, creating this kind of system At naglalaro tayo. Just try to imagine we have five people all means around 90% of the whole entire world. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Ophelia Cantor. Ilan lang yun, lima lang yun eh. And according sa 2022 global, uh, global report ng poverty, pag inipot mo yung yaman ng mga yan, they can afford to sustain yung food natin for around many years. Hindi mo kaya kayo magtrabaho. Ito hindi mo naging yaman ng mga mga tao yan. Kaya niya pakainin ang lahat ng mga tao. At kanina yung naharap natin. So ba't tayo kinakailangan pang magpunta? Eh ba't tayo naiimbit ako sa ganda mga kasoriented po? Hindi siya ko, bakit tayo kinakailangan pang mag-isip? Ano nang mayroon pa sa atin na kaya pa natin lumaban? Marami pa rin. Buti si Opel yan. Hindi na, si Opel hindi na wawalan. Ang dahilan kung bakit. And every time yung kumakatok na bahay namin, mahuningi ng tulong. We should have cut off my daily budget of 50 pesos, 100 pesos, just to help this person, the victim of the system, na ginagawa actually ng mga billionaires. But you know, can I imagine yun? We keep on giving. At yun ang spirit na meron tayo, hindi natin alam kung bakit din saan nang galing yun. Because every time yung itinil ako sa mga anak ko, ayaw ko ang umalis sa mundo nito. Nasasalangin nila yung hirap ng mundo. Ganyan siyang we keep on fighting. Yung sinasabi nila, ano eh, no? ilang mga philosophers. At tayo may isang philosopher, sa gundak daw, sa gundak, pag may isang pulo na putol, at may ugat pa siya, siya sustain siya ng mga ugat ng mga katabi ng puno, pero nang natili siyang dry. Kasi yung life ng mga katabi ng puno, nakadepend rin sa life sa itong system. Kaya tinutunong yung kanyang nila. At yun ang reason binibigay kung bakit kailangan natin din talaga tinungan. Because yung collapse 2008, yung financial collapse, ang pinakadalagang malaking input nun, maghihiyaan tayong lahat. Hindi natin pwedeng kainin ng pera. And number one problem natin, hindi rin tinag ng pera. Yung 2008 collapse sa US, sa Wall Street, sinalo nila yung mga billionaires, sinalo nila yung mga bankers, kasi nag-imprint ng pera. At hindi pwedeng kainin ng pera eh. Pero walang food for action yung problema natin sa kasalukuyan. Paano tayo sa kalimang buhay? At every day ng mga mga anak ko, ayaw ko siya ng iwan sa kung gano'ng klase ng bundo. Kaya nang natili ako yung naging malaban pa rin. Kaya nang natili tayong lumalaban. Kasi may mga iipan tayo na depende sa mga pangasyong ginagawa natin sa kasalukuyan. Ang baliwain na yung problema, totoo rin naman talaga yun. Just don't imagine, exploit it up ang system. Marketize ang buong system at lahat tayo hindi na kung ano save ang power sa kasalukuyan, hindi ka din dito ka ng baril para ibigay mo yung pera mo. Bibigyan ka lang ng bagong cellphone, papakitaan ka lang sa market. Inalagay lang sa istante yung bagong cellphone. Hindi ka na kailangan persahin. Bibigyan mo yan. Uutang ka para bilhin niya. Ganun din yung tulad mo yun. Kasi napiprojit sila ng design. Huwag nagigay sa consumers. Kahit kaano ka kalibirhatid, kahit kaano ka karadikal, yung design mo ang pinaprojit ng merkado. Lahat tayo biktima doon. Maglabasan tayo ng cellphone ngayon. May mga iPhone sa atin eh. 
But the difference between two thousand pesos na cellphone at two thousand pesos, almost wala. Kung meron kang isang iPhone, ano ka sa silipunan? Kung meron ka bang, hindi yung lagi kung magkikita ka ng mga classmates ko ng high school, may coach ka na. Hindi ka bang kung kung bakit ang batayan ng progression, ang development, kung may coach ka na. Kung ka na nagkaadlag niya ang traffic. Kung tayo ka imagine, for the past two years, lakas ng product ng yung kahanap na kinang. Kung tayo ka imagine also, yung 5 billion years na nito sa kasalukuyan, during the pandemic, nag-multip pa yung kanilang wealth three times during the pandemic. So this is a legit system. And the part of the system, this kinakain natin at kinakonsumerize natin yung sistema ngayon. At yun ang dapat natin talagang sinan. Huwag natin tama si Tito eh. Pinasalin natin yung biktima ng mga sistema. Yung new rate, pinatayuhan natin. Yung rate is ayaw natin ituro. But it's time for us to stop working with the poor. It's standing up against the billionaires. Standing up against the politicians. Totoo naman yun eh. Kasi pag i-work with the poor, magiging santo ka. If you stand up against power, magiging si Romero ka. Mamamatay ka. And that is a challenge there. Pero may hirap yung ayaw natin yun, di ba? Ayaw naman talaga natin matepok. Mas gusto natin maging santo, maging hero. Pero yun ang challenge natin. Bakit yung accumulation ng wealth ng billionaires, tuloy-tuloy na yun. Hindi kita kinahigot tayo. And yung Global Poverty Report by 2022, around 75% ng wealth, property lang ng 1%. At sa Philippines alone, yung even report, sinusweldo sa atin ng less than $2. Halos around 69% ng mga Pilipino, less than $2 day ang budget for me. Ganun katindi yung gap at ganun katindi ang maraming mga may hirap. Well, tama siya sa aming mga anawin. Meron yan tayong pagmamahal sa kapwa natin. In the same way, we have to be strong enough to stand up against us in power. Para natin gagawin yun. Kung magsasama-sama tayo, tayo sa sabi ni Tito, baka pwedeng gawin yun. But mahal, mas malaking challenge sa atin yun. Para sa ating mga Pilipino, na mahawa yung kasaysayan natin ng polarization, na colonization yung mentality natin, na colonization yung elite class natin, at nagiging kasangkapan yung elite class natin, na patuloy na eh, dinigitik sa atin, yung will kung mga dati natin mga colonizers. Malaking mga paghamon sa atin yun. Pero kung nasasabi ko, at nangangamba si Hotel doon, hindi ko sinasabing sumuko tayo. Ibanin natin ang laban. Kasi hindi nagbabago yung kalaban na hindi... I- ang problema daw natin, yung struktura natin, yung paraan natin yung repayde pagdigma. Pero pruyas lang. Pero yung kalaban natin, nag-i-evolve siya. Ito yung paraan ng pag-exploit, yung paraan ng subjugation niya. Nag-i-evolve siya. Sumasabay siya sa kasaysayan. Tayo hindi. Kasi tradisyon na masyado tayo. Kaya dapat lagi may diskusyon, mag-aaral, pagtingin, pag-iliti ng mga paraan ng ating pakipag-tunggali sa mga taong matang alitin din talaga para medyo nakikita natin, nababasa natin kung paano tayo makipaglaban. So yun na po yan, no? Salamat na buktungan ko lang yung sinabi ni Tito. Salamat. Wow, creative. Si Reverend uh, Nestor po ay professor siya sa isang theology school ng evangelicals din. So, kaya ganyan siya ka-creative. Good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, resolve na kayo dun sa presentation ni Father Tito. Yun po yung tutungtungan ng Anawim Mission sa buong taon ng 2024 hanggang March. But then, uh, we hope that it's and every one of us here will uh, make themselves, yourselves active sa mga programming na uh, Anna Wimbledon.
last point lang talaga, ano, go back tayo talaga tayo sa basic. Lumabas sa comfort zone, go house to house. Nung panahon ng election, nabigla na lang tayo. Laki-laki pa lang dapat habulin. Pero naglunsad, naglunsad nun, kahit sa payatas, naglunsad ng house to house. Dati ang score nun ay si Lenny, Lenny ay 2, tapos si Marcos ay 10. Naglunsad ng house to house na bawi hanggang 5. Hanggang Pero, ibig sabihin, ang laki talaga ng house to house. So, lumabas tayo, house to house, house to house, engage talaga. No? Huwag magputik ng paa. Hindi po pwedeng, ano, uh, balik ulit tayo sa dati ng, ano, ng tayo. Thank you. Go house to house. I think the Carmelite, uh, do you still have your presentation? Mayroon pa po? Uh, wala na ba? So, mag- you have? That's a nice topic. Sabi mo na bibihin ko. Uh, ito po sir, ito po yung lupa ko. Naga, uh, 29 hectares ko. Saan nakala yan? Oo. Lahat ang makikita ko, bibihin ko. Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Magkano ba to? Mga 69 million lang naman po. Ayun okay, okay. din. Bibigay ko yung 69 million sa iyo. Ito yung mayari nito, no? Ito yung mayari. Oh, sir, ano, sir, 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 ano po sa akin, sir? Ah. Ako yung may-ari ng lupaan ito sa'yo. Ay hindi, wala. Ang aking ng lupaan sa akin yan lahat. Hindi, hindi yan, yan sa'yo. Sa kanya yan. Ay, hindi po sa akin ako yung may-ari. Sir. Yan, walang sa'yo. Ay, sa akin, sir. Ay, hindi lang ka lang. Ito kayo may sa'yo. Ito na kami yan. May rasen. Huwag po, sir. Huwag.
Sulo ang reforma sa lupa. Patinan at pagmahal ay kailangan ng bayan. Grabe ka, creative, o. Oh. Ang galing pala ng karma light sa mga theater performances. Congratulations. Sana marami pang mga performances na ganyan. Very progressive and an eye-opener ng mga performances mula sa inyo. Salamat! Sayang hindi nakita ng mga ano, kabataan ng Indonesia. Anyway... Um, congratulations sa bawat isa sa atin uh, na iyong natin ang 6th year anniversary ng um, Anawim Mission. Tatandaan natin na pag walang mga Anawim sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin, wala tayong inspirasyon, wala tayong lakas, wala tayong energy. Di ba? Yes. Um... Yeah. Um. Sige, bago tayo mag-closing prayer, pahinggan muna natin yung closing remarks ni uh, Robert Nestor. Although talagang nag-monologue din sila, creative din siya kanina. Um, closing remarks niya and then doc, doc, we will call Doc Carmen to say something to... Uh, the whole participant and then si si Father Albert will lead us in a closing prayer. Well, siguro as part ng closing remarks uh, yung Halloween. Na, kilala kong Halloween second year anniversary nila yun eh. Then, was invited to be part. Di nagpaalam ako two years ago. Mag-artista kasi sana ako nung kaya na medyo pandemic so hindi na tuloy yung mga yung mga star guild na mga ganun. Katatapos lang ng Lent, di ba? Suspend muna natin yung notion na si Jesus ay Diyos. Basically, si Jesus ay biktima ng sistema. Sistema ng panahon ng colonization ng imperial domain ng Rome. Kung malaki tanong din sa kanya, bakit kaya nakalangan niya limitaw? Mag-mobilize ng map from Galilee onwards sa Jerusalem sa death niya. At hindi ba siya nagsaalang-alang na he was actually marching towards his own death? At naging malaking inspirasyon yun hmm, sa atin. At aside of course sa mga inspirasyon nila, Father Romero at ang ilang pa, It was Jesus Christ na nagahanap at humuhugot tayo ng inspirasyon. Kung matalim ang pagtingin niya sa exploitation ng imperyo, matalim ang pagtingin niya sa mga institution of plunders na inilatag ng imperyo na kung naging kasangkapin mismo yung templo at yung mga elite class ng Jewish Palestine ng panahon niya. At tulaban din naman talaga siya. At yun ang magandang inspirasyon na dapat natin sundan rati. No? Most of the problem sabihin na wala naman akong anak para paghandaan na kailangan kong lumaban. But all those, those children na higitan natin, next generation, we have to make sure that, that the life na aanihin nila is a better life. Obligasyon natin lahat yun. Obligasyon natin, kargahan natin lahat yun sa ating balikat. But itiakin natin yung next generation na may isang magandang masarap na hangin may mga puno, lupain, tamang sharing ng income, maayos na buhay. Hanggang sa tatayanin natin yun, sa kasalukuyan, huwag natin isasuko yun. Ano mang paraan, ano bang metodo, bahay-bahay yan, o ano namang pwede natin gawin. Nanawin may isang malagandang lugar na kung saan pwede natin maging katulong o bahagi. Kaya kami po ay 
nag-a-announce, maging membro na po kayo, nagsabi lang kay Kiyoko, si Father Ponce, at tulong-tulong po tayo. Kaya congratulations sa anawin. At it, pinapotin mo ako. Salamat ng marami at sa lahat ng mga dumalo sa grupo, sa mga conveners, sa salamat sa inyo, kay Bishop Inigas, salamat po, Bishop, sa pagpunta at sa lahat. Pagpalaan tayo at nabuhay, see you next year sa ating 7th at concert. was tasked to give thanks to these wonderful people, no? Unang una, list of donors. You know, Anna, we started with zero, nothing. But because of these people, and of course, uh, who, who, was, who was able to convince these people? It is siyempre si Father Rico Ponce. Palakpakan nyo nga si Father Rico Ponce. Imagine, na-convince nila itong mga taong ito to give Uh, basta ang, ang kanilang donor between 300 to 10K. No? Yan. Ako nakikinig po kayo, Dr. Pamela Cordillaga, Mr. Orlando Etwak, Evelyn Salvid, Bibena Alcinin, Lea Reyes, Father Noel Rosas, Ruby and Gerdy San Pedro, Jeffrey Mabini, Luz Bininda Clertan, Banji Rodel, Gloria C. M. Kaninang umaga, nagulat ako na siya kako talaga. Ang laki ng donor ng Carmel Care Philippine Foundation. This is a care for us, no? Carmel Care Foundation. This morning. Tapos ito, we also have to thank those people behind the success of this event. Yung aming technical staff, si Tata, at saka si brother. Asan si Poging brother? Ayan, brother, no? And sabi ko, Pogi, ay kang pakita. Pakita ka ng brother. Ayan po. Di ba, Pogi siya? O kung pogi, palakpakan nyo. <laughs> Ayan po. Ngayon, ang isa pa behind this, our technical staff, at saka ito, ang acronym nila ay SGJ. S, very sincere in cooking. Kita nyo, naubos talaga lahat yung pagkain. Ang pangalan niya ay ate Susan. Nagawa sila lahat is ate Susan. Okay, susunod po, G. G means Good in preparing the venue. Siya talaga ang nag-ayos dito. Ang pangalan niya ay Grace. Ate Grace, mahihain sila. Nandiyo sa lapas, Ate Grace. At ito sila, dahil sa sarap ng pagkain, ganda ng venue. So, we feel happy or joyful. So, isang isap namin, si Joy. Tawag namin, Joy P. And of course, we need a father. Okay? Jesus needs a, a human father. di ba? para mag-guide. And ito yung parang ito, Carmel, like that. We want to thank him. Kung nakipagsabi nyo, we want to thank Father Joseph. Thank you, Ko. Okay. Uh, huli, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng nagsipunta kahit after lunch si Mateo. Masarap daw matulog. Yung uh, kanina pa, kaninang umaga pa, salamat-salamat sa inyo at nagbigay kayo ng oras para dito. At sa lahat ng mga seminarista at mga priors and, and all members of Carmelite family, thank you. It's Calabinian. Uh, ang um, TFUC, RMT, at uh, Sanghiwa, nandito sila kanina. Ah, sa papala. May announcement yung Sandiwa. If you are interested to join yung exposure program nila, April 27 and 28 sa uh, Mangyan community sa Oriental Indoro. Okay. So, salamat kay Ma'am Orphi, Yus City siya, and mga sisters, and each and every one of you, Bishop, maraming salamat. Uh, so, tatawagin na natin ngayon ang ating magbibigay ng closing prayer, si Father Albert. Father.
magiging ano ako ah. Uh, anyway, ako isang laiko. Hindi ako pare. Ako in charge sa pastoral ng ICTC or Intercongregational Theological Center sa May Ulas, Tobaliches. Uh, may estudyante ko rin yung mga Carmelites, Franciscans, and other mga small congregations na nandun. Uh, ako po isang ama. So, ngayon, uh, hiningi ko ang inyong presensya. Uh, tumayo po tayong lahat. Sa mga nangamad, tawag ako ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. May mga minat yung mahal. Maraming salamat sa pagbabay, sa anawin mission para sa may hirap, sa kanyang ikaanin na taon mula ng kanyang tatag at tunsilang. Naway magkutuloy pa ang aming pagkilos, ikibaka at tulong para sa aming mga patakit na nasa laylayan. Maraming salamat buhay sa mga taong nagbuhagi ng kanilang mga karanasan at kakayahan sa pangilitan ng aming katalutayan ay sa araw ito. Salamat din sa presensya ng bawat isa sa amin na huwag maging hamang sa amin. Hindi patuloy kami sa misyon ng inyong kaharihan kung saan nandoon ang iniibig, kapayapaan, kakaisa, stusya at kapantay-pantay. Ito ay amin ng inyong sa mga dalit sa stusya. Amen. Mga anak sa 